Hello, everyone. Happy Saturday. I think my mic's on. Yes. OBS is telling me that the mic is on. How are you guys doing? How are you guys doing? Look at all you guys showing up. I, I, I'm just going to let this um, thing play for the next few hours. You guys, 17, 18 of you guys here just watching this. I'll go out and go, I'll go do some shopping, order some food. I'll come back. I'll see you guys in a couple hours. <laughs> uh, how you guys doing? Um, I see. Uh, hey, Tana, how you doing? Firebird, Galaxy Punk, the usual crews here. Hope everybody's doing well. So there's this new game that came out. Maybe you guys have heard of it. It's the uh, the Worlds of the Outers or something. We're gonna play that. The game is louder than before. yeah. Well, the music's kind of loud. Um. All right, it says press any key. Where's my any key? I guess that's the any key. I might have to turn the music down. Uh, so yeah, this, there's a thing that came out called The Outer Worlds, and we're going to play it. I'll knock the music down a little bit. Um, I did install this last night, played around with it for a couple hours, just to kind of get a feel for things, get the graphics settings um, set up. I had everything set, pumped up to Ultra. They don't give you a whole lot of fine detail here. Everything was on Ultra, but when I was uh, doing a test stream earlier, I was running in some jankiness in the um, one of the towns. So I knocked a couple things down to very high, left everything else on Ultra. I With YouTube, I don't think you guys are going to notice the difference. I really can't notice the difference. Um, frame rates matched it, locked at 144 for my monitor, so things shouldn't get too janky. Um, yeah, so we're going to play this awesome game. Um, yeah, I was two hours into it and I was just, just blown away. I didn't want to stop. <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to get too far with it though. I, I kind of wanted to do, uh, as much new and fresh and unspoiled for the stream. Um, yeah, so let, uh, once we get going here, let me know how the out and everything sounds. Because I have no idea. Everything in OBS is set for what it normally is for Fallout. And I don't know what uh, what that's going to do for this game. But um, yeah, I appreciate you guys showing up today. Um, I had a blast with this game. I absolutely had a blast. It So far, two hours in, all my expectations were met. It was exactly what I hoped it would be. And I was really, really, really having a blast with it. And contrary to what people on the internet keep saying, it's not an open world game. I don't know where people who never probably played an open world. This is uh, not an open world game. It's the next best thing, though. Um, so, yeah. Um, I guess. Let's just uh, get going here. I'm going to do normal. Everybody I see on the Twitches is doing Supernova, which is hardcore mode. There's no way I'm doing that. I want to learn the game first and enjoy it my first time through. So we're going to do normal. You can always bump it up later if we need to. Because he even says this is recommended for your first play session. See, Supernova is like uh, hardcore in uh, New Vegas. You can only fast travel to your ship. You can only sleep inside your ship. You can only save while you're inside your ship. Your companions can permanently die. You need to eat, drink, and survive. So all the usual hardcore stuff, but this... Uh, whole thing about only being able to save while in your ship. That's the one thing that I, I, I do not like. So, we're going to go with normal for now. And I'm going to keep all that stuff on. And... Yeah. I guess we'll get started. Loading screens are pretty cool. They're simple. And I love the art Why style. Why stay earthbound when prosperity awaits you in the stars? Come to Halcyon. The only colony on the edge of the frontier, owned and operated by corporations. A trip of ten yeah, short everything in the game like is owned minutes, by corporations, including the people. It's, it's pretty interesting. In perfect society designed to maximize your productivity with guaranteed full employment. With only a minor term of service, you will become the master of your own destiny when you go out of this world to the Halcyon Colony. <laughs>
hundreds of thousands of colonists left to drift out here forever just to keep from damaging the board's bottom line. Disgraceful. Alright, so I guess we gotta make a character if we're gonna do this thing. Uh, there is a bit of exploration. It's, it's I guess you can call it semi-open world, lack of a better term. There's basically hubs. It's like a hub system. And within the hubs, there's there's a fair amount of exploration you can do. The first planet, because you have all these different planets that you can go to. The first place I was in, it seemed like there was quite a bit to go and explore. Lots of quests. And uh, so, yeah. So, we have attributes, skills. They're, they're, the character creation is pretty cool. And... I'm just going to go kind of for a jack of all trades, basic uh, basic build, nothing nothing too specialized, at least uh, for the first time through. I'm not going to really, I think I'm going to leave strength where it is. Um, there's plenty of opportunity to increase your um, carry weight. It's basically for your carry weight and for melee and heavy, heavy weapons is pretty much... It's kind of nice how they have it broken down. It's almost, I guess, like for Fallout, this would be your special skills here. The bulk of, uh, your, I guess, your core uh, core attributes, I guess. So I'm going to leave Strength because I'm not doing melee. You guys know that I don't do melee, and I'm not doing melee in this. There's too many cool weapons to go play with, too many guns. So I'm going to leave Strength where it is. And uh, like I said, there's plenty of opportunities with perks to increase your carry weight. Uh, companions give you a carry weight bonus, and unlike um, the Fallout games, your companions, you don't do inventory maintenance with them. You can give them weapons and armor, and that's pretty much it. Uh, you don't give them stuff to carry. They essentially just give you a flat 10-point uh, carry weight bonus. And if they leave your party, then you lose that. So, uh, so I'm going to leave st uh, strength where it is. Dexterity. I'm going to... I, I, I want to go... I'm probably going to go with, like, speech and guns. So, I want my intelligence, perception, and engineering, too. I'm going to put another point into perception, uh, temperament. Oh, yes, lying. I want to be a liar. You can lie in this game, and it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty cool. So, I think I'm going to leave... Actually, I'm going to drop Perception down one. Dexterity. Sneak. I'm going to leave everything base except Strength. All right, I'm going to leave... I, let me... Yeah, I'm going to leave every... Modify everything. Cause I, I can't talk today, guys. I'm, I'm so excited. Dexterity, you're going to have... Uh, add 1.2. Intelligence, Perception, 1 point. Charm. We're going to be Charmers, but we're going to be a lying Charmers. Um... And uh, temperament, and yeah, with with these you get looks like you get a plus a 3.5 health regeneration per second, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna go with that. We'll hit E for next. And the way skills work, they're in these basic groups, and then once you uh, get them up to 50, then you can go and add them um, individual. Like right now, if I go and put, I get two points here. I can put. These are almost like, I guess, uh, your tag skills initially. So you could put... Uh, a crack shot. Capital. Yeah, oh yeah. And if, uh, depending on what you uh, choose, this mad doctor, this mad scientist guy that's woken you up, it's almost like Doc Mitchell, where he comments on, um, on your special skills after you take the Vigorator test. So if I go to Dialogue... I hope we haven't lost that silver tongue to frostbite. Hmm. Yeah, he actually has commentary, which is pretty cool. So I think for now, I'm going to go with speech and ranged. Dialogue and ranged for... You are going to paint the system red, my friend. Yeah. Yeah, I want to be a liar. Uh, <laughs> I want to be a liar. I don't believe you. Uh, yeah, in the first time I did a character, I didn't realize this is where it defaults. If you scroll down, you actually get tech and leadership. And leadership is good for inspiration for your companions. And tech is obviously medical science and engineering. And stealth is actually tied to uh, your hacking and lockpicking skills. So, and every time you level up, you'll 
Every actually, it's like New Vegas. Every two times you level up, you'll get um, to add a perk. You get perk points. No, actually, no. Every time you level up, you get skill points, and then every two times you level up, just like in New Vegas, you'll be able to add a perk. So we're gonna go with ranged and dialogue, so we can be a sharpshooting liar and aptitude. Aptitudes are kind of almost like an occupation that gives you a little bit of a bonus. And there's uh, the beverage. You can be a beverage service technician. A uh, halcyon colony needs good people, but will settle for ones who can mix a memorable drink. As a human cocktail shaker, you've made concoctions that could end wars or fuel skip drives. Skip drives are like warp drives in this game. The, the faster than light drives, they, they call them skip drives. Um, you're still trying to balance out flavors of a truly signature old-fashioned, though. And you get a drink effect duration plus 3%. So a lot of these may not be applicable to a uh, normal mode like this one. The drink durations are, probably aren't going to do too much, but you can be um, janitor sanitation class. I bet you're a genius with a mop. Hmm. I'm just going to click on somebody to see what his dialogue actually is. A laborer. You'll have plenty of company. Hmm. No one can see you cry inside of a mascot Yes, suit. Tan, I'll get cyberpunk when it comes out. It's going to be a while yet, though. I'll have to ask you for a good sisty pig recipe. Um. I wonder what experiments you were subjected to. Yeah, I, I just think it's cool how he comments and everything. It's, it's certainly a lot more interesting than hearing, All right, I'll walk this over to the vault. There's an archaic profession, like town crier or civil defender. So... N-ray damage received. N-rays are like rads, I think. I haven't actually encountered those yet, so... But I think N-rays are the equivalent of rads, radiation damage. Uh, elevator operations specialist. A proper lift goes up and down. Anyone who thinks otherwise isn't fit to wear the badge. Being a specialist means something where you come from. A commitment to upward and downward mobility that doesn't have a price tag. I think I'm going to go with... Uh, we're going to be an elevator operations specialist. You poor thing. Made to listen to that dreadful music all day. Hmm. Oh, we get an engineering plus one. And when I was testing uh, earlier, I was doing... Uh, I, I took the science one. I think we'll go with engineering for now. That will be our attribute. Attribute. Aptitude. I knew it was one of those. All right, so here's where the fun begins. This is your character creation. Um, I was playing with a female character earlier. We're going to go with a male here. And it's kind of the usual thing. You have a bunch of um, face presets. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time because there's uh, really no third person in this game. And some people have been complaining about that. Honestly, I, I can't stand playing third person. So that doesn't bother me. The only third person you get is um, if you, um, you, know, you go away from the keyboard for a while and the game kind of just idles. Uh, 15 20 seconds or so maybe it's longer the camera starts to spin around like kind of like it doesn't fall out for if you just um let the game idle for a bit you'll kind of get the camera spinning around your character i think we're just gonna go with uh something simple here we'll go with this guy i'm not gonna let's see we'll give him i guess those eyes i'm not gonna worry about this that's fine. For the amount of time we'll see him, we'll probably have helmets on most of the time anyway. So, hairstyles. The uh, hairstyles in the game are pretty cool. Lots of options. You get like 30 different options here. So. But I am Vault Tech. Now, th now there we go. That's classic. Yeah, actually they... They use the same hairstyle, so you can actually give your uh, male character the female hairstyles if you want. Nobody's going to judge you. Now, the entire premise is you've been in a cryopod for 70 years, so... What was cool and fashionable back then probably isn't going to be so now. Um, facial hair. Let's see what facial hair we got. Yes, you can actually uh, have a female character with facial hair if you, if you so desire. So you can actually play as a bearded lady if, if that's your thing. Hmm. 
It's kind of reminiscent of the um, character creation in New Vegas in 3, although that obviously they, they don't look like potatoes. Hmm. Yeah, we've been in cryosleep for 70 years. Hey, TC, how you doing? If I could get this on Steam. Yeah, it, uh, I had thought about working on, uh, or waiting until it was out on Steam, but I have no willpower. I really wanted to play this, so. I broke down, gave Epic my money. Um, we'll go with that, I guess. It doesn't really matter. Um, features, we're not going to do, ah, uh, let's give him a couple scars, because why not? Let's see what the scars are. I didn't actually play around with the, with the extras here before. We'll go with a, uh, we'll go with that scar there, I guess. And then you can age him, make him a little older. We're just going to stick with that, I guess. That's probably fine. Uh, I have no idea, Tana. Game's not even out yet, so maybe. Um, ask me in about a year and a half when the game actually uh, is closer to release. How about we go with Elon Musket? I guess. I don't know. Just something I... I guess that's good. Um... All right, so Elon's Elon's gonna be our man, and uh, let's see. Yeah, Steam. It, it'll be out on Steam next year. Well, then ask me in April. <laughs> I don't know why you're asking me now. The game's not even out. So, yes, I'll be streaming it. There, there. Um. So we're gonna go with that. I don't do Call Looks of Duty. To be your lucky day, my friend. Could care less about Call of Duty. Please power down your engines and prepare to be. Not likely, bootlickers. Ugh. This guy is awesome. Initiate skip jump, Phineas. He's very Doc Brownish to me. Status structural integrity down twenty five percent. Power levels down. <sighs> skip drive. Shit. Ah, there you are. Wondering what's going on, eh? Bit of bad news there, I'm afraid. Your colony ship was inexplicably knocked out of skip space and forced to complete its journey at sublight speeds. This means that you and every other colonist on Hope have been in suspended animation for 70 years, give or take. Normally, <laughs> reviving someone after so long leads to some quite horrifying results. It's called explosive cell death, but it's really more of a liquefaction. Something wrong? Oh, yes, well, not to worry. I've pumped your body full of a special concoction I devised to keep you from dying so horrifically. Hopefully at all, but uh, I guess we'll see, yes? Unfortunately, I used the last of my chemical supplies saving you. I know it's a lot to ask, but I must have your help securing more if we're to save the rest of your fellow colonists. I'd see it done myself, of course, but the board has a sizable bounty on my head. Now, my ship is inoperative, but I've managed to hire a smuggler to help you out. He'll be... Oh, I see we're in position. Good luck! He has a problem with buttons.
Uh, Daniel says, I hope they bring mod support to this game. Well, funny enough, Nexus put an Outer world section up Is this, thing working? The, ah, this morning. There you are. Now, uh, where were we? Oh, yes, the smuggler. His name is Hawthorne, and he should be waiting for you at the landing site. He's to be your uh, chauffeur, so to speak. And not to worry, I'm told he's a specialist. Dashing gunslinger, one of a kind ship, that sort of thing. You'll like him, I'm sure. I've also outfitted you with a simple wireless monitor, so I can track your progress. I'll check in with you as soon as you land. Good luck. I'm... Uh, all the colonists are counting on you. So yeah, the board that he keeps referring to is like... this top of this big mega corporation that controls everything. Yeah, so this was won't mind you taking his ship, supposed to be the guy that was supposed that. to meet us here. And Not instead sure of just putting I the beacon down in the ground and, and moving it back, he just head. stood there and we, we landed on top Shame of him. Shame about the whole Whoopsies. squashing thing. Nasty way to go. Alright. So, let's take a quick look at things here. We don't have vats yet. Well, we don't have vats, but uh, we'll get to that in a second. There is a, a kind of vats thing. This is your inventory. Um, yeah, we don't look. We look a little dashing. Elon looks pretty good. Um, so this is your basic... You can go into your uh, your strings here. This is our inventory maintenance. We don't have any weapons yet, but it's it's pretty familiar if you guys uh been around the Pip-Boy any length of time. There's um, armor management. Yeah, every the first time you get the little tutorial things... Um, Drag your armor or helmets up to the equipment slot to wear them. You can also manage your armor here. Break them down. Inspect them. Compare to other armor. Take them as junk or drop them. So right now we just have this hibernation suit. And if you hover over this, it gives you the uh, the specs. And I kind of wish there was a way that you could like move this off to the side or something. But it gives you the, uh, the armor type, the bonuses, the weight, the condition. There is a condition system. Armor and weapons do degrade. Um, but the nice thing is, is that you can pretty much scrap anything anywhere, but there are workbenches. They're like a single workbench. There's not like an armor workbench or a weapons workbench. It's a, a workbench that you can scrap, modify, tinker with, um, and add mods to your weapons and armor all at the same thing. Um, it's, it's, I actually kind of like it. The, um, weapons degradation isn't, isn't crazy. And you basically, if you find a weapon, it just... Breaks it down into armor parts or weapon parts for armor. And you can use those to fix anything. It doesn't have... It's not like in, um, you know, 3 in New Vegas where if you have a shotgun, you can only repair it with a shotgun. So, if you scrap a weapon down, it just becomes weapons parts and you can repair any weapon with those. It's... I, I kind of like that. So, then we have consumables. Uh, here, you can use junk or drop your consumables. They can be used to gain a wide variety of... Boost. Your medical emergency inhaler is shown at the top of the screen. It uses Adreno as fuel to heal you in an emergency and always keeps it loaded into slot one. So Adreno are like stim packs. They restore your health. Uh, increase your medical scare to unlock drug mixing slots that can hold all types of consumables, not just Adreno. And each slot is mixed into every puff of the inhaler for a combined effect. And your medical skill increases the duration of those effects. So this is what that was talking about. This is your, your inhaler. And I have it hot keyed to F. I think that's the default. And Adreno is, like I said, it's basically a stim pack. And as you uh, advance your medical skills, you can put other chems. And this is basically your chems and your food and your drinks. You can put other chems into this slot here. So when you activate the inhaler. So let's say this is always going to be here. You're always going to want that. But if I have something that gives me a speed increase that lets me sprint twice as fast I can put this there I can put this in here so while I'm healing once I hit the hit the um, inhaler key 
I get the speed bonus and I get the healing bonus. So you can mix and match those uh, as you see fit. Modifications are your armor and weapon mods, and you get those as rewards. You can loot them. You can buy them, I believe. Um, general is just, I'm not sure what that is. Okay, those are quest items there. And then junk, which is basically things that you can sell. So that's pretty much that for the inventory maintenance. It's um, very familiar, but yet um, different enough that uh, takes a little getting used to. So we're just going to do what the game wants us. Okay, jump over that. And it is sneaking. I don't have anything right now. I don't have any weapons or anything. And, okay, I'm already sneaking, so we're just going to go under this. This is just a little basic tutorial area, so we're just going to kind of... But I think the game is gorgeous. I mean, the sky at night will get the auroras like you get uh, with Skyrim. We'll do what the game wants us to here. It's just a gorgeous game. It it kind of reminds me of some of the things I've seen from, from No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky. Which, uh, some of the color is a little garish for me, but, but that's fine. You get used to it. Uh, and you can use tall grass and cover for sneaking. I don't know if this is uh, an Unreal Engine thing. But, like, you go into the grass, the grass kind of disappears, but you're actually concealed in it, which is kind of cool. Um, so I just looted the corpse, and it's kind of just like Fallout. If somebody has something on them, you can uh, loot everything or loot one thing at a time. And no, this is not a cooking station. It's taking me quite a bit of getting used to the, a lot of the things in the game you just can't interact with. Um, this is the first, first new game, new, newly released game that I have bought since Fallout 4, if you can believe it, since 2015. And I'm so used to being able to interact with most of the things in the world that every time I go up to something, I expect to be able to interact with it, but I can't, so. So the awareness meter is basically those little triangles there. And when they're white like that, they are unaware, those are enemies. And now that they're becoming a little more aware, once they turn red, that means that they're going to be hostile. Not like that. I just, I don't think they can get to me, I hope. I hope they can't get to me because I don't have any weapons. Drop down here. Um. Yeah, I'm... Oh yeah, this is, this is a scripted event here. Easy now. You've been frozen for a while. There's bound to be unforeseen side effects. Yeah, uh, Daniel, I keep hitting... I keep hit, I have um, third person bound to L in Fallout. I keep hitting that. And I don't think it does anything for me here. I, a lot of muscle... That's why I've, I've... As much as I can, as much as I've been able to, I've tried to rebind my controls to what they are in Fallout. In Skyrim, I kind of make everything the same, but I couldn't do everything because there are some, um, I'm actually going to drop a quick save here. There are some pre-bound keys for your companions, and I didn't want to mess those up. So I'm, I'm having to have a lot of muscle memory. So this is going to tell me to, oh, so what he was talking about there. I can't do it yet. That little purple effect that um, Infinius just came on the, the radio and said that Raban has some side effects. That's something that we'll get to in a little bit. That's kind of the replacement for VATS. It's called Tactical Time Dilation. And it's a side effect of you, the way the game explains it, it's a side effect of you being in suspended animation for 70 years. And it essentially slows down time to a certain degree. That purple bar... Up, if you look at the HUD up in the top, the red is your health, the purple is the, um, it's basically like your action points. You don't have action points in this game. You can sprint and run as much as you want, and it will not drain action points. That purple is basically for your, um, your time dilation. Um, and I kind of like the fact that you, you can just keep everything on sprint and, uh, and not get tired. 
Makes it a little more more enjoyable. So we have to jump down here. Ah, and I just broke my leg. So this is the little tutorial thing. This is I'm gonna hit F, and this is uh, you guys can see how the um, how the inhaler works. So that just restored my health, and we should have yeah we have uh, have nine of the, actually there's there's always one here. This is your reserve. So every time. You use the inhaler and use an adreno, it'll take it out of your inventory. So you want to make sure that make sure that you keep stocked up on those. Yeah, this is um Fallout X as you made the first step. I still have to buy any new game. This is like this is um first new game that I've paid for since 2015. I got Battlefield 5 free when I bought my RTX card, my RTX 2080, and I installed it, and I haven't even launched it yet. I'm probably just going to nuke it. I'll never play Battlefield 5. I did get Rage 1 um, on the Steam sale around Christmas time last year for like $2. Launched it for the first time about a week ago. Played about an hour of it and just kind of got hey, bored with you. it. Come here. Oh, this is our first NPC to You've interact with. you tried the with. best now. Now try the rest. Spacer's choice. Oh, wow, that stings. So, everybody in this game is essentially... The simplest term, they're owned by these corporations. And everybody is employed by a corporation, has a loyalty to it. Like, instead of having loyalties to countries and factions, they're loyal to their corporation. And every time you talk to them... Well, almost every time you talk to them, they'll try and work their marketing jingo into the conversation. It's pretty awesome. Um, let's see if we can patch this guy up. Well, um, guard Pelham, sit still. I can patch you up. Huh. Looks like the bleeding stopped. I owe you one. Hope you don't mind me omitting this little exchange for my report. Spacer's Choice doesn't like us accepting outside help. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's almost like insurance companies in the U.S. If you... Uh, Go to a doctor that's outside of the insurance company network. They they don't uh, take kindly to that. Hey Tony, how you doing? Um, are you feeling any better? Better, thanks to you. I might have bled out on my own, or worse, had to go begging the boss for some Madrina time. We were out on patrol. I saw a marauder camp up in the hills. Thought I could take him. Then my gun misfired, right through my side. I mean, what are the odds of that, right? Just barely scraped by with my life. Crawled in here and blocked off the exit with those canisters. Hmm. So, what's this about marauders? Gibbering, flesh-eating, law-breaking, unemployed lunatics. Unemployed. <laughs> Some hull had grounded their spacecraft out in the open. That's a real good way to attract marauders. See those canisters by the entrance? Marauders come sniffing around in here, and I can take them all out with a single shot. Not bad, huh? Yeah, marauders are kind of like raiders or bandits in Skyrim. Um, except so far I haven't heard them say you, you picked a good time, picked a bad time to get lost, friend. Um, so this is where your speech checks come in. You could, uh, it's, I really like not having the whole voice protagonist thing. Um, so, uh, let's see those canisters. I've got a better idea. Give me your gun and I'll go get help. Uh, we can lie to them. Someone grounded their ship illegally. I'll hunt them down for you. Well, I really would like to get a weapon. Oh, you can intimidate him, too. You're an idiot. Give me your gun before you get yourself killed. <laughs> um, and each of these corporations, like this guy is from Spacer's Choice, they're, they're essentially factions. And you can build... It's just like New Vegas. You can build reputation with them. Um, if you do enough things to piss them off, you'll get vilified. It's We can go take a look at that in a second here. But um, let's see if I can persuade him to give me uh, his weapon. Uh, I've got a better idea. Give me your gun, and I'll go get some help. Yeah, okay. You look like you know your way around a gun. Got some spare ammo. Not counting the bullet in my side. Here, hmm. you can have my saber too, for patching me up and all. Nice. All Spacer's Choice weapons are now 30% less likely to malfunction. You've tried the best, now try the rest. Spacer's Choice. <laughs> yes, nailed it that time. Uh, can you tell me where I am? You hit your head or something? You're in Emerald Vale. We're a Spacer's Choice community. Edgewater's a little ways down. Uh, prettiest place in the Vale. Uh, be sure to stop by a provisioner's for a can of our famous salt tuna. Hmm. Uh, do you know anything about the Hope? Now, the Hope is the ship 
that um, your character was in uh, cryo sleep on that um, Phineas, Doctor Phineas, uh, woke you up from. So, do you know anything about the hope? The hope? Is that some sort of fancy new drug? Are you with Anti Cleo or something? Don't take this the wrong way or nothing, but I'm not allowed to fraternize with Cleo workers. Company policy. Anti Cleo is another one of those uh, those corporations. Um, all right, I guess we're done. All right, so we now have a weapon. And I'm not gonna. If you, uh, if I were to kill him, I would lose reputation with uh, Spacer's Choice. So if we go to character, yeah. If you go, here's your your skills perks. This is uh, this is the perk chart here, which we don't have anything available yet. They're they're pretty basic. You know, there's toughness. I mean, some of them are actually gonna sound familiar from Fallout. Um, you get ones for, like, uh, Negotiator. Being a shrewd negotiator can cost you some friends, but you can make up for it in bits. So you get uh, vendor prices. There's Pack Mule, which is basically like Strong Back. Increases your carry capacity. But over there at the Reputations tab, these are all of the um, the different different factions. So we haven't actually gotten in um, contact with the actual Spacer's Choice yet, but just for this one, the board... Uh, the Halcyon Holdings Board of Directors is the big corporation. You get the positive and negative effects of everything you do will, will affect all that. So, let's see if there's... Oh, where are we here? Uh, Magpix. I'm going to go check that out. Magpix are like um, your lockpick devices. Here. This actually tells us... Inventory... Let's see. Tool used to pick locks. Stealing is not the answer. Stealing is the question. The answer is yes. Unauthorized use of this item by any person without a security rating of A5 is a Class C felony. So, lock picking and hacking, the mini games like you get in uh, Fallout and Skyrim are gone. Basically, it's based on your skill and how many of these you have determines how fast it takes you to pick a lock and we won't have anything to pick yet so like it's hard it's easier if i just show you but you don't there's no mini games involved in the lock picking or the hacking so I, so this is where i'm getting uh, i'm still i'm looking in every container expecting to find things to loot and some things you just can't interact with i think we are I don't think there's any containers or anything over here right no so let's go Okay, weapon management. You can have up to four weapons equipped at a time, dragging them into the slots at the top of the screen. On this page, you can also inspect your weapons, compare them, flag them as junk, break them down for parts, yada, yada, yada. Players with the engineering skill can repair weapons on the screen as well. So, by default, it looks like it put the, the weapon in there. I'm actually going to drop that into two. So, these are all your weapons inventory slots. And these are the four that you can have equipped. In armor, you can have basically a piece of armor and a piece of headgear, normally a helmet. Um, it's not like um, Fallout 4, where you have the different, we have the layered system, where you have under armor and you put individual armor pieces over. It's much more like the older Fallout games, where you basically have armor and uh, and a helmet. There is power armor in this game, and it's like uh, it's like the old school power armor, which is basically just a suit. So. Uh, we gotta go that way, so we're gonna have to get rid of these barrels here. Damn it, my ears! Hmm. Oh, hey, Legionary. Can you hear me? What in the this? Uh, Legionary, I actually played this for a couple hours last night, to kind of test things out, and I'm I'm loving it. Uh, okay, so here. This is what we're this is kind of the substitute for VATS. Uh, tactical time dilation. Due to complications stemming from being revived after an extended hibernation, your brain processes time differently. Pressing the TTD button shows slows down the world, giving you time to think as well as take action. You have limited time in this mode. Standing still drains your TTD meter very slowly while moving and attacks drain it faster. Uh, TTD refreshes over time. And there's um you can as your skills increase you will be able to actually um i think it gives you increased chances of critical damage and you'll be able to target individual body parts
Uh, but Legionnaire, I, I played this for a couple hours last night to kind of get a feel for things, and I, I'm, it's it's awesome. I am loving it. All right, so we have our first batch of raiders here. I'm sorry, marauders. They're just the one. So this is what the uh, the tactical time dilation looks like. Uh-oh. Okay. Oh! Damn it, I didn't want to do that. That was stupid. Well, let's see if I can find some food here to heal up with. Let's see. Oh, salt tuna is kind of like the local delicacy. Um. Oh, F to use that. And this gives uh, 200 natural, 20% natural health regeneration will down some of the tarmac and cheese. It's not real tarmac or real cheese. Delicious. And I think because of the, where are we here? Because my temper, I get a, 4.4 health regeneration per second. So, even if I didn't heal up, you see my, uh, you would see my, um, my health meter regenerate on its own. Um, how does the shooting feel? I think it feels fine. Um, one thing I've heard people complain about, they, they, they say the combat's a little lacking. I think it's perfectly fine. It's not a combat focused game. It's not, you know, combat isn't the main objective in this game. So, I, actually like it i think it works pretty well of course i i i'm saying that with only two hours playing and very limited uh experience with it J shooting what just killing these two marauders that's the first time i've shot anything so far since we started start, started the stream um but i i i like it i have no problems with it um your hacking a lockpick skills help you get into places you're not meant to uh, Meg picks are used to break open locks, and bypass shunts are used to break computer systems. Oh yeah, bypass shunts are these other little, they're almost like a uh, bobby pin for, uh, for, for hacking terminals. Uh, if your skill is high enough to break the security, you will see how many mag picks or shunts you need and how long it will take. Raising the skill lowers the number of items used and the speed up the process. So, rather than sitting here with a, um, a bobby pin and a screwdriver, see I don't have enough to do anything with the top. Looks like I need uh, I need two more two more mag picks. So let's grab these, a bunch of nanners, and a mock apple. I'll take that. So now this shows me I I need I need four mag picks. So if I hold down the E key, it's gonna take me four seconds, and that's it. That's that's lock picking in the time. The longer the time, it's the, the more likely that someone's going to discover you picking the lock. If you're, let's say, you're in a hangar bay or something, you're in a or a city, you're in with a lot of people around. The longer it takes you to pick the lock, the more chances you're going to get a get uh, get discovered. So this was a telescoping staff. I'll take that. That's pretty much pretty much the generic generic containers that you'll be looting. Uh, we already got that guy. What else we got here? Fish sticks. Pre-sliced bread. Hang on a minute. Pre-sliced bread. B-R-E-D. By Spacer's Choice. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, this is, uh... Pretty much everything is going to be by Spacer's Choice. Zero G brew. I didn't even look to see what this was. Uh, alcohol. Personal, personality attributes plus one. Uh, so and it gives you a minus one dexterity, minus one perception... And minus one charm, which is essentially your charisma. So, all right. So that's all there is to loot here. I'm actually, gonna actually make a big boy save here, since we haven't done that yet. And because it's not a Bethesda game, quick saves are are an actual option that you can use. I not have to worry about getting things getting corrupted. Um, this is on the Unreal 4 engine, in case anybody was wondering. Um, 
I haven't played an Unreal game since Unreal Tournament in 1999, so... The original Unreal Tournament, with, and not, not any of the ones with a number after it. So let's see if we can't get... Uh, I'll have to get a little bit closer here. Now, this armor suit... Okay, does a plus five for tech skills. So that adds... Where's our skills here? So our suit is giving us... Uh, these are the bonuses that you get from your from your armor. Uh, my When I was playing earlier, I picked up a suit of the power armor. And that gives a negative five across the board for your stealth skills. So sneak, hack, lock, pick are... Um, you get um, a negative effect on those. But uh, this is giving me... Science and engineering. All right, I couldn't remember what what that actually did. So let's see if we can't uh, say hello to them. Uh oh, reloading. Okay. The only only thing about combat that I say I would like to see changed is there's no doesn't seem to be any grenades in this game. I haven't come across anything grenade wise. I found landmines. Got killed by landmines, but I have yet to see anything dealing with grenades. Um yeah, you can uh Switch between weapons, you can either use uh, the keyboard, or you can use... Oh, that's reload. You have, yeah, you have like a, a quick melee attack. Yeah, this dismemberment actually is pretty good. I, like I said, the... To me, the focus of the game is at combat, so... I think people that are complaining about it... That's, that's what they want to play the game for. Um... But everybody has has their thing, and to me, combat is kind of secondary to the story. Yeah, this is uh There's there's the ship. We got these two fine folks over here, but this is the ship that we need to get. Oh, we have actually have marauders down there too. Let's go talk to these oh, guys. Blazes, where'd you come from? Don't know where you came from, stranger, but you best keep your head down. There's marauders hereabouts, and worse, landing violators. Oh no! Oh, on that rung leech. Landing in the veil without using an official Spacer's Choice landing pad. I'd slap him with a fine if it weren't for all these marauders shambling about. All these marauders kicking around, they're worried about a parking violation. Um... So I heard, you know, I found one of your teammates holed up in a cave. Really? How is he? Um, he'll make it. I either I helped him with the pain or still a moron. I'm hoping you're a little brighter. Let's go with that one. Of course I am. I'm a superior officer. Stands to reason, don't it? <laughs> Just you watch. I'll cross these marauders off with a swift, cost-efficient fury that's made Spacer's Choice the most trusted brand in personal defense. I just, you know, need a couple of winks to catch my breath. <laughs> Stretch my legs some. I, I, will, I will say I love the writing in this. Um, the dialogue is just, it's freaking awesome. Um, so we can, let's see, we can persuade her. And these Spacer's Choice Guards back down from a challenge. I bet you could get those marauders to tell you where the owner of that ship is. Intimidate, um, guess I'll have to give you a zero on my customer satisfaction survey. <laughs> let's try that one. Seriously? But those marauders will... <sighs> You know what? You're right. It's time we cross those marauders off, find whoever owns that ship, and file a full report. Then it's gonna be fucking laminated. <laughs> Here we go. All right, so we can probably get them to take out most of these guys. I don't want to hit my new friends here. Right. Let's see what these guys have. They have light ammo. Um, there's not a whole lot of types of ammo either, as far as I can tell. There's um, light, 
heavy in energy, which I have yet to find any energy weapons at all in the two hours I was playing. Light is for like pistols, assault rifles, uh, light ballistic weapons, and heavy. I was able to find a machine gun, a submachine gun that used that. Um, but I haven't found any energy weapons yet. Oh, I forgot. I, I should have lied. Well, well, we'll do some lying later on. We'll make up for it. So, this is all the inventory. You can scroll through and get the inventory. We're just going to take everything right now. Um, oh, the bits. You keep. I meant to say bit cartridges. Those are like caps or septums. Like caps and fallout or septums in Skyrim. It's basically the currency. And right now I've only got 19 of them. Uh, this is your carry weight here. Uh, so now I got 21 out of 80. Now once I get my first companion, my carry weight will bump up to, to 10. Or it'll bump up 10 to 90. Because I, I mentioned earlier, once you get uh, a companion to join you, instead of trading inventory with them and actually giving them the stuff to carry, you just get a flat out carry weight bonus. Alright, so this is the ship that we need to get into. A candid tail. I'll probably sell that. And take it. So you're kind of like the dogs on the planet. The, um... The mongrels. So, they're writing a parking ticket. So this is the ship they were supposed to go find. This is Hawthorne's ship. The guy who, uh, our pod landed on and we, uh... Kind of killed, squashed to death. Yeah, but look at this. I think this is awesome. And you've got ships in the sky, too. You've got... You've got birds. You've got... That ship there, and then way off in the distance, you got that ship there with the chemtrail on it. Yeah, it's there's another one over there, and then there's a volcano over that ridge there. You can see some of the ash in the sky. It's just the atmosphere is really, really awesome. So, while our new friends are busy doing their paperwork, let's head on into the ship. Okay, you can fast travel locations you have unlocked by opening the map and selecting your destination. Yeah. Um, fast travel works pretty much like it does in any other uh, game that we've all known and loved. Once you discover locations, you can uh, you can fast travel to them. Uh, map journal. So this is where all your quests are. And one thing I didn't realize that I think is kind of cool is um, you can sort your quests by... By the type, so your main quest completed. And it'll even tell you when you screw up a quest. Like if you screw something up, it shows up under the botch. I haven't done that yet. I kind of want to see what happens with that. Um, you can do by location. Because there's multiple planets you go to. And each planet has all these different locations in it. So it's probably a good way to sort that you know, on a per planet basis. And newest alphabetical quest type. So we're just going to leave it on location region for now. So we make, made it to the ship. Drop a quick save here. Please be informed that this vessel contains no valuable oh. plunder. Oh, yeah. Joel actually brings up a very good point. Because um, uh, there's one thing to be said about this game. 16 times the detail. And, yeah. So it's um, at least 16 times the detail. Intruders are not authorized to access the unreliable's amenities. Including the cargo holds workbench. Yeah, and this is the workbench. We'll go uh, look at that in a second here. Because the little green dot is telling us to go over this way. And this... Unauthorized access of spacefaring vessels is a crime. Please submit yourself to the authorities. And um, if this voice sounds familiar, this is, if you saw my post in, the, in my uh, community tab, Ada, this is the ship's computer, is voiced by Courtney Taylor, the female fall, the female survivor in Fallout 4. So, let's talk to her. Hello, Marauder. I am Ada, the autonomous digital astrogator of this vessel. Please be informed that I am authorized to use violent retribution against unwanted solicitors. Please return any misappropriated equipment and exit this vessel in an orderly fashion. Failure to do so will result in your immediate destruction. Um, Firebird's asking where do you get the audio file so quickly. I have it uh, assigned to a key on my Stream Deck. Stream Deck is this little USB thingy I got sitting on my desk with a whole bunch of little LED buttons on it. 
And that's how I can do cutscenes. I can switch over to like the slideshow or the Be Right Back screen. And I actually uh, 16 times the detail. I have one a, a button there labeled 16 times the detail. And that uh, sometimes another one labeled. It doesn't just work. It doesn't work. So it's basically it's like a hotkey. It's a hotkey for uh, for OBS. Um, it's a pretty cool little device. I'm, I'm just getting into some of that cool stuff with it. Uh, so, let's see. So, Ada is basically telling us we're trespassing, and I'm not here to misappropriate anything. I detect an elevated heart rate, indicating dishonesty. Please prepare yourself for lethal deterrence. Jetstream procedures initiated. Disengage in airlocks. I love how her, her pictures change, too. Her facial expressions. Three, two, one. Uh, you do realize that we're on the ground, right? You are still here. My deception protocols have failed. I have been programmed to express disappointment. Um, so is this Hawthorne ship? This vessel is the registered property of Captain Alex Hawthorne. I am incapable of accepting orders from anyone other than Captain Alex Hawthorne. Uh, let's see. Hawthorne was supposed to meet me when I landed. Hawthorne's dead. I'm sorry. Your captain's a red smear under my escape pod. I understand. I will require some time to process this information. Thank you for your patience and for your honesty. I am programmed to take orders exclusively from Captain Hawthorne. If I accept your orders, then you must be Captain Hawthorne. Do you understand? <laughs> I guess I'm Captain Hawthorne. Yeah, I, I get it. You need me to be Captain Hawthorne or you can't fly. Well done, Captain Hawthorne. I see your powers of deductive reasoning remain intact. Unfortunately, our engine is currently inoperable. Our main drive suffered a critical power failure, and we were forced to make an emergency landing. The main drive's power regulator has been irreparably damaged and must be replaced. Hmm. So we can uh, just say, where am I supposed to find something like that? Or get, uh, use our engineering skill. Uh, yeah, Daniel says, reach the Firefly. Yeah, it's, uh, I, ever since the first trailer, I, I, I got a Wicked Firefly vibe from this game. Um, so let's go with Engineering 5. I, I doubt I'll find a part like that just sitting in a garage. Astutely observed. However, the probability of locating a power regulator within a worker settlement falls within acceptable parameters of certainty. High capacity power regulators are sometimes employed in the electrical networks of worker settlements. I have taken the liberty of printing you a new captain's identity cartridge. Please try not to lose it this time. <laughs> this cartridge identifies you, Alex Hawthorne, as the registered proprietor and captain of the unreliable. Do you understand? That's the ship's name, is the Unreliable. Um, yes, so I'm Captain Hawthorne of the Unreliable. I like it. Thank you. I appreciate your cooperation. Best of luck in your search for a power regulator. Try to stay alive this time. <laughs> All right, we got our first level up. All right, so... Let's see. Anti-Cleo Management Training. Skill Improvements. Every time you level up, you earn skill points to spend on improving your skills. Spending a skill point on a core skill, such as melee, improves all of the specialized skill in that group up to a maximum of 50. After 50, you can add points directly to specialized skills up to 100. So, it's very much like uh, like New Vegas, obviously. Uh, every skill improves as it grows, but special unblock, but special unlock bonuses occur every 20 points. Uh, read each skill description to see what they are armor consumables consumables and status effects can temporarily raise and lower your skills this helps or hurts skill checks and the skills passive bonuses but they won't give or take away the skill unlocks so work diligently improve yourself and you too can achieve middle management <laughs> okay so you've been promoted level up uh you've gained enough experience to go out to go up a level, open your character ledger to advance your character. Leveling up increases health points, uh, gives you points to upgrade your skills, as well as access new perk every other level. Keep up and you'll be an upper 
and you'll be upper management material in no time. So this is what they were talking about. This is where the base skills unlock every, uh, every 20 levels. So right now for skills, we have 10 points available. And if I, to it's kind of like what we did when we first uh, added our first couple sets of skills here. If I hit on ranged, it puts handguns, long guns, and heavy weapons all up equally. So once these get maxed out to 50, I'll be able to go and assign points individually. Same thing for all of these. Once I hit dialogue, once those hit 50, we'll be able to uh, customize and, and do those individual. So I'm actually just going to kind of pump up uh, stealth. Let me get seven here. I'm not going to waste anything on melee because I'm not going to do that. Where is... I want to be a good liar, so I'm going to put some into that. Uh, I've got five left. So tech, I'm going to start pumping some in the leadership for when I get my first companions. Um, medical, i got two left. Let's split those up between, I probably should put one into dodge or block, but we'll go with dialogue and weapons. And E to apply. And accept that. Time dilation location hits. You've unlocked location hits effects for time dilation. Hitting enemies in different locations during TTD, maims or cripples, maims or cripples those body parts. Try different locations to see the different effects. Hits to the chest produce different effects when using different weapons. So this is... Uh, oh, combat die. Oh yeah, this is another thing too. You've unchecked a, a dialogue combat skill when attacking... The correct type of target, they are automatically debil debilitated. So you can actually have enemies cower and flee. It's it's pretty cool. Um, just kind of catch up on chat here real quick. Deny further cooperation with Bethesda. Well, you know, um, the other thing too is there's no microtransactions. There's no microtransactions. It's like they made a game and they just sold it. It's like, okay. Um, One-time purchase. Let's see. Um, welcome to perk selection. On this screen, you can choose which perks to buy with your perk points. You get a new perk point to spend every two levels. You can also acquire perk points through gameplay, such as accepting a flaw. Oh, yeah, flaws. Flaws are things we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, flaws are almost like traits that you pick at the beginning of New Vegas. Um, they kind of have the same thing. They, they Usually they're a detriment, but they have a positive side to them. Like there was one, I discovered what landmines were when I was playing last night, and it gave me uh, the option to choose a permanent concussion as a flaw. And I don't remember what it was. I think I lost like... I think I lost like a point of intel. I lost some intelligence buff, but I got some other damage resistance or something. I can't remember what it was, but I chose not to take it. But yeah, you can get a permanent concussion as a flaw. It's pretty cool. Um, all right, so perks. Let's see what we got here. Um, let's see. So let's see. You've grown healthier in your time outside. So 50% your base health. Let's see. Slow the world. Time dilation lasts twenty five percent longer. Surely this is normal. <laughs> um, lone wolf. Sometimes this is almost like lone wanderer. Sometimes you're the only person you can trust, and that's okay. You deal increased damage when adventuring alone. Um, which ones do we want to get here? High maintenance. You take better care of your weapons and armor than most people. Twenty five percent. My uh, twenty five percent lower weapon. Twenty five percent boost to your weapon and armor durab durability loss. So things will degrade 25% slower. I'm going to take that. I like the sounds of that. And we will apply. Yes. And each one has has a level. I think there's five, five levels. Yeah, this is the tier two. So you have to get... There's five levels of each of the tier... Of each perk. And then once you... Uh, Look like when I get five of these, I can go back up to the tier two. And I think that's it. We're at level two. And let's see. So, 
Oh, I want to show you guys something. If your equipment oh. is in need of repair or modification, the Crux 2000 workbench is at your disposal, Captain. Okay, we'll go to the workbench in a second. I have something very important. Extremely, extremely important. See that ladder over there? That ladder over there? You can climb it. You can climb that ladder. See? Climb. You can climb ladders, guys. We have climbable ladder technology. Obsidian's done it. Climbable ladders. So, yes. You see those ladders? You can climb them. And your companions will climb them. Your companions will actually go up the ladder to follow you. It's brilliant. Um, just to show you again. So, Obsidian's done it. They've, they've cracked the technology the technological issues that prevented climbable ladders because it just works yes what is the sorcery all i can say is test six better have climbable ladders the ship's engines cannot be powered until a replacement regulator has been properly installed um so yeah this is we have to get the power regulator from if you possess a power regulator that's where that's got to go so this is like the engine room slot, all which right is this one so, is this anything down here? I don't remember. Oh, yeah, this thingy here. This is the... Want to be a brand new you? Try out our respecification machine. The respect device. Alex installed it himself. Right before he died. So, if you want to respect your character, if you decide that you want to go with a different build, uh, you can do it, but it's going to cost you. Uh, the price to respect it, with, it increase with each time you use the machine. So... I have to use 500 bits, which I don't have. The bits, again, are the currency, and I don't have enough to do that yet. So, But uh, you can uh, go and respect your character there for a cost. That's right. Who needs quantum computers? We got ladders, man. Ladders that we can climb. Look at that. I think there's going to be the entire rest of the stream just going up and down ladders. Um, let's grab that. I suppose everything on the unreliable belongs to you now, Captain. Help yourself. No, really. <laughs> so there's weapon, 15 weapon parts. And we have a sawed-off shotgun. And this is a bed. We'll take a look at the rest of the ship here in a little bit. So this is the workbench. And I just I just love the look and feel of these, of these cells. They're so well done. The art style, everything is fantastic. Uh, workbench allows you to repair, upgrade, and modify your weapons and armor. Keeping you combat ready in tip-top shape at all times. On each screen, first select the weapon or armor that you want to work on. Then choose what you want to do with it. Repair it, break it down, modify it. Tinker for an upgrade. So, there's your weapons and... Okay, oh, I have all this other, this rebuilt mining gear. Well, I'm actually going to break some of these things down. What do these things give us? Stealth plus five. Hmm... Armor 4. I'm actually going to keep one of those, and I'm going to break the other ones down. Because I actually would like something to give me a little bit of a, of a stealth boost. So I'm going to break a couple of these down. And you can see there the condition of the little wrench icon. That's 100%, so I'm going to keep that one. And the weapons, I'm not going to use... Uh, there's two of these, this telescoping staff. I can break this down and get... Uh, Three weapons parts, and this two. I'm going to break this down. Now, the sawed-off shotgun, let's take a look at this here. So, <clears throat> oh, if you can see the little... I can't move my cursor over there. Um, TC Games, it's because Todd didn't make it. Yeah, <laughs> it's. I'm telling you, man. It's like ladders. Ooh, it's very important. Ladders are very important. Uh, you can see where it says, um, I can't move my cursor, otherwise it, it will disappear. But it says, break down your weapons parts 20. Um, that's how many, I have 21 pieces of weapon parts that I can do repairs with. So this is actually 5%. So I'm going to want to re repair this. Let's go over to the repair field here. Yeah, this thing is pretty crappy shape. So let's see if I can repair the shotgun. And that probably took all of my uh, repair parts. And let's go to armor here. This is 97%. I think we'll just leave that. 
I have six armor parts. Um, uh, stealth actually is tied to your hacking and lockpick skills. So the higher your stealth, we'll go back to the the higher your stealth skills, the higher your um, luck pick and um, hacking are going to be. Uh, tinker, I have nothing I can tinker with. Oh, uh, you haven't unlocked the ability to tinker. Upgrade your science skills to tinker. Okay, tinker is basically you can give your weapons. Let's say you can give your weapons a slight damage boost. Basically, you're paying currency for it. So. When I was playing last night, I was able to give the shotgun, I think it was like a 15% damage increase or 15% critical damage increase. So every critical shot did 15% more damage than without the tinkering. And I think it cost me like a couple of hundred pieces of currency for it, a couple hundred bits. So it's a pretty cool system. I'm actually uh, looking forward to, to playing around with it. And when you get modifications, when you actually get mods to put onto this stuff, you uh, this is where you do it. Everything has, um, if you see the armoring, gadget, skill kit, utility, there's four different kinds of mods that you can put on your armor. I think it's the same thing for no, magazines. Certain weapons will only have, uh, accept certain types of, of um, you see the modifications. This one is basically for magazines. I haven't found anything else that, uh, to modify yet. So that's that. Um, so let's go back into the skills. So yeah, stealth. Once I'm able to, um, the more points you put in your stealth, it's not only your sneak, but your hacking and lock picking. But as far as sneaking, I've haven't found that it's actually a thing, but I know that there's parts in the game where you almost have to sneak. You have to be stealthy because they're restricted areas. And if you get caught going into them, you will get shot at. So, um, yep, Legionary, there's weapon degradation. Absolutely. And it's a pretty cool system. Due to catastrophic power failure, all doors will remain on security lockdown. Yeah, this is actually a, this is the captain's quarters. It's almost like a little player room. I, I'm not going to call it a player home, but basically I think there's a bed and some storage in there. Because right now I don't have a place to put anything. And then these rooms here are where your companions These are the crew's quarters. Go. Alex preferred to travel alone, but he always had me. Yeah, and these will unlock once you... All this stuff becomes unlocked, I believe, after you restore your ships, the power to the ship. Like, you can't get into the captain's room yet. I'm pretty sure we need to, uh... Because that's sealed. I'm pretty sure that opens up after you get... We complete the quest to restore the power. Um... Take a peek down here. This is like a little galley down here. I wish you could sit. I, I keep... I'm so used to, uh... The Bethesda games, you can actually interact with the furniture and stuff. You can't do any of that here. A lot of this stuff is just static. It's just for show. But we do have... Yep, there's a fridge with some uh, salt tuna fillets. We'll take those, because those are delicious. I just love the style. I mean, that's... That's the sink. The stove and everything. It's, uh... Algae lager. That's good drinking. But uh, everything's pretty much... These surveillance devices allow me to monitor you constantly. Please ignore them. Hmm. All right. So that's pretty much the ship. That's as much of the ship as we can get to. Yeah, I love the design of this. It's just... Uh, it's pretty awesome. It's exactly what it needs to be. It's not over the top. It's... Uh, I, I think my biggest thing is is I'm so used to just being able to interact with everything. Um, like, I'm so used to looking in containers and finding things in them, and a lot of this stuff is just static. But that's fine, because it doesn't need to be... Not everything needs to be lootable. So this is an actual bed. And I've yet to sleep in this game. I know in the hardcore mode, in, su in supernova mode, that's kind of a thing. Um, so we've been going for almost an hour and a half here. I'm going to take a quick break, guys. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll head on outside. Let's see. Let's check the journal here. We have to head over to the nearby settlement of, of Edgewater. And uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's basically this area over. So we'll head outside. We'll head over there and see what's going on. There's a whole bunch of quests over there. I only kind of scratched the surface on, on that place. So just take a quick break for a few minutes, and then, uh, then we'll continue on. See you in a few.
All right, we are back, and I just saw Tana said bye. So hey, thanks for stopping in, Tana. Good to see ya. Enjoy the rest of your day, night, morning. I'm not sure what time it is in your neck of the world, neck of the world, neck of the woods, however you want to say it. But uh, appreciate you stopping in. Um, I'm looking around for my companions. I don't have any yet. Before we head out, I wanted to look and see how much. Well, first off, I actually want to uh, put my Shotgun up there. Okay, so that was enough to all those um, bits that I had. It was enough to bring that up to 100%. That's cool. And let's see. 116 rounds for that. Cool. All right, we're not doing too bad for ammo, but I'm going to want to get something other than this pistol. Um, so let's drop. That's 100. I'm going to leave those. I might end up scrapping those, selling those. And that's kind of the nice thing I, I like with this system is that you can scrap these down. Like I can scrap those weapons down. And I don't think that the, uh, that the components, yeah, the components, they don't weigh anything. Oh. Well, that's awesome. I'm wondering if they, I'll bet they weigh something in uh, Supernova in the hardcore mode. But in this mode, they don't weigh anything. So... That is actually kind of cool because if you got a bunch of weapons and you're getting over encumbered, you can just scrap them. Because you can actually scrap things outside of a workbench. You just don't get as many uh, many components for them. And you can go to vendors. There's vendors that will repair things, but it's way expensive. When you can, if you can hold off coming over to a workbench and doing it yourself, you're much better off. It seems like. All right, so let's head on outside. Get uh, get some questing going. Oh, it looks like it's nighttime out. Say, uh oh, this wouldn't happen to be your ship, would it? Because you sure walked in it like it was your ship. And if this ship is yours, well, Mister, you owe Spacer's Choice a hefty fine. I'm afraid we got to dock your pay. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, we're gonna lie. Uh, you've got it all wrong. I am a starship safety inspector. Oh, by the law. I'm so sorry. I had no idea we had an inspector coming. If you'd like to speak with my manager, I report to Constable Reyes in Edgewater. Edgewater's not too far. Just follow the road east of here, over past the cemetery. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to inspect the crime scene before I make my report. <laughs> All right, take care. All right, so I guess this is night. There's no, uh, I don't think there's a clock or anything. No, there's really no, uh... Nothing dealing with time that I've been able to figure out. So I'm going to guess this is night. And that just looks... Now, does that not look like a Skyrim sky with the aurora? That looks very Skyrim to me. Looks cool. Um, yeah, the volcanoes look awesome. I haven't made it over there. I don't know if you can... I don't know if you see that volcano, if you can climb... Oh, look at the ship. Look at that. There's always ships in the sky. It's so freaking cool. But yeah, the volcano, I don't know if you can climb it, but, uh, like, I tried going over this way when I was playing last night and got killed to death by some gorilla-looking thing, so we're not going to go that way. We need to go... One of your characters, hoses, tentacles, vestal appendages is twisted. That? So we have to go over here to Edgewater, the name of the town. And years ago, 20 years ago or so, railroad that I worked for, the uh, the guy was basically the more or less the owner. He was like the uh, the chief CEO, I guess you call him. Lived in a mansion in town called Edgewater, but everybody that worked for the company referred to it as Dredgewater. So kind of, kind of made me think of that. And I think there was a, uh, yeah, there's a Marauder camp over here from what I remember. I did come this way before, so. I got as far as getting to Edgewater, do some poking around there, and then I kind of called it quits because I didn't want to get too far ahead. I... See, there is somebody over here. I don't know where the hell 
was he? And I see I can't see them now. Oh, I can shoot while jumping. That's kind of cool. Oh, I can I can shoot while jumping. Oh, you have you have an automatic weapon. I want that. I I want your weapon. Looks like there's only one left. Cool. I worked for two railroads, actually, Galaxy Punk. I worked for uh, the New York, Susquehanna, and Western, which is where that uh, story took place. And I worked for Conrail up until the time they uh, got bought out by CSX. Oh. I was a train dispatcher. Or as some people would call it, train delayer. I didn't get you, did I? All right. Yeah, sometimes the enemies will go down, and you think that you've gotten them, that you've killed them, but you haven't. Oh, there's some armor parts. We'll take those. So they'll almost like they'll go down, but they're just staggered, because that's one of the effects that your weapons can, can do. All right, so there's some heavy ammo. Oh, a hunting rifle. Ooh, let's check that out. I haven't seen one of these yet. So that's long guns. That's one of my... Uh, that's one of my base skills, so we're going to go with that. Yes, the special effect is stagger. So every weapon has a special effect on it that you can exploit when you go into uh, the time dilation, it seems like. Knockback. Let's drop that into slot 4 for now. I bet we could get a nice scope on that and make that a... Uh... Oh! Does it have that already? Hang on a second. Oh, yeah. That's got a scope on it. Oh, wow. That's sweet. I only got six rounds for it, though. So, where'd the one with the automatic weapon go to? That's what I want. Desdemona approves. It's a bit cartridge. Yep, there's, um... It's basically like finding caps or, or septums. Alright, so where'd those uh, other ones go? Hmm. Okay, so that's primal. That's what I got killed by before when I went, tried to go the other way. They're like these big gorilla things. Where the hell are those other bodies? They're not way the hell back there. Are they in the in the grass and I can't see them? Don't tell me they despawned on me. I don't know where they went. Hmm. I'm totally missing where those bodies are. Well, now. They couldn't have been back this far. There's just the one. Well, I'll be. Well, we got the hunting rifle off of that one, but there was, I think there was like two more. Well, that kind of sucks, Ors. I don't know where they went. Oh well. There'll be plenty more of those guys to uh, release from their torment. Yeah, they didn't get that close to me, so I don't know where the hell they went. Huh. Alright. That's odd. Totally unplayable. Completely unplayable. Alright, let's just continue on then. I'm sad. One of those guys had an automatic weapon. Yeah, some big old shrooms. But you can't interact with them. They don't actually do anything. Were there any more bandits around? I seem to think that there was. 
Was there more down this way? Completely unplayable, 9 out of 10. Oh yeah, yeah, there's, a, there's another one down here. Let's see what this guy had. Let's test out this wonder weapon here. Let's see what this actually does. Oh, look at that. Oh, there's three of them. Okay. Come on out. Oh. I gotta reload. Come on out. Got him. Alright, let's get this guy. Bit cartridges and some light ammo. Hey, the only thing... Other thing that... Um, I might like to see changes. You can't loot their armor from them. You can buy new sets of armor. Well, actually, sometimes you can. Like, this guy has the piecemeal mining helmet. But it's pretty rare that you can actually loot... Uh, loot any armor from them. Like, my, I was playing last night. I got that suit of power armor off of one of these uh, Marauder guys. But it was... It was like... It was like a marauder, marauder boss or something. He was, what it's called. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I've had very, very few actual armor drops. Very few weapons drops too. Actually, it's usually ammo and chems. Now this is a piecemeal mining helmet, armor type light. I'm gonna drop that on. Just it gives me a. Plus five for one-handed melee, but it gives me another four for armor protection, so I'm just going to drop it on. And it's 100% condition, so. Um, Legionary says, uh, how long until people start modding the game? Uh, it, they're n definitely not supporting modding anytime soon. And I don't know, because it's an Unreal Engine game, I don't know how moddable that actually is. Although... Bright and early this morning, Nexus already has a uh, Outer Worlds section for mods. And the only two mods up there right now are... Um, there's one to get rid of the, the start start screen, the start video, when you first launch the game. And a, um, a thing to actually unlock the developer's console. So you can actually use console commands if you know what they are for Unreal Engine. On the on the hose. What, what hose, Joel? On the arm. Let's see. Whoa, hey, where'd you come from? Don't go ambling out in those hills. That's marauder territory, friend. Ah, uh, let's see. Well, my uh, my pod crashed back in those hills. Your pod? What are you on about? You take a bruise to the cranium, ain't safe out here. You'd best head. Oh, to the, the character screen. I got you. Yeah, that kind of bugs me too. I know what you're talking low, about. Yeah, it looks kind of goofy. <laughs> I missed. Yeah, he. Uh, Edgewater's high walls and low, low prices. Um, I never got your name. I'm Elon Musket. Pleased to make your acquaintanceship. I'd shake your hand, but I've been hauling corpses. You don't want none of that on you. <laughs> name Silas. Junior in humor for the town of Edgewater. We're all part of the Spacer's Choice family. Uh, let's see. Who do I talk to about a power regulator? Definitely not the Junior in humor, that's for sure. The Junior in humor. If you've got business inquiries, you should stop by Reed Thompson's office. He's up in the tower above the cannery. Head into town, follow the road. Look, you obviously ain't a worker. What's your racket? You a smuggler? Freelancer? Uh, let's see. Depends on the work. You offering me a job? Edgewater is a company town, board owned and operated. That includes the cemetery. None of us own our grave sites. We rent them from the company. Renting means money. Money means paperwork. Paperwork means signatures. Some of our families become a mite delinquent in paying their dues, you see. So, yes, the townspeople have to rent their graves. 
Uh, so you're making people pay for their own graves? Company policy. If it was up to me, I'd put the whole town ten feet under, free of charge. <laughs> uh, let's see. And you want me to collect uh, the fees, so why can't you collect the fees yourself? Quotas, mostly. Got a backlog of graves to fill. Bodies won't bury themselves, you know. Uh, let's see. Hey, 34, how you doing? Loving this game so far. Absolutely loving it. Um, alright, I'll collect your, your grave fees for you. Four workers still haven't paid up. Phyllis, Conrad, Ludwig, and Martin Abernathy. He's a Abernathy. special case. You may want to twist his arm a little. Where have we heard Abernathy before? Why is Abernathy a special case? He just is. Look, I don't want to get into it. Just make sure he pays up. Uh, let's see. Where can I find these people? Conrad's got a barbershop in town. Phyllis works at the cannery most hours. Abernathy... I ain't seen him in a few days. His domicile is near the cannery. You'll find him in town. All except Ludwig, that is. He's over by the landing pad. Hmm. Alright, something else I wanted to ask. Yeah? Uh... Let's see... Town must be in pretty bad shape if it's keeping you employed. You could look at it that way, I suppose. You could look at us and say, those Edgewater saps lost near every soul to plague. But you'd be wrong. We're survivors. Loyal company folk, brave in the wilds. Hmm, so... How long have you been been the junior and humor, gravedigger, whatever? Hang on, I'm doing some math in my head. Uh, 20, 30, carry the one, uh, all my life. Work's been real good to me. Fresh air, exercise, only problem is the paperwork. Can't get anybody to pay their gravesite fees. Hmm, so you lose a lot of people to marauders? Former people, yeah. Former people. My graves, you see. Hence the armed guards. Hmm, so what are they after? Loot? Oh no. They are after the most precious loot of all. Spacer's Choice Company property. If those marauders swipe any more bodies out of my cemetery, company's gonna duck my pay. <laughs> um alright, I I guess that's uh I guess that's it. Alright, so he wants us to go. Let's actually drop this uh make this a uh, double click on a quest to make it your active one so it's four people he wants us to go get the gravesite fees from conrad ludwig phyllis and old mr abernathy so these guys huh what i wasn't dozing off <laughs> yeah corporate uh, corporate recruit so every corporation has their own security force Coffins. Now these uh, doors with the blue, uh, the blue lights on them. Those are ones that you can interact with. Ones like this you can't. They're just they're just static. And if it's locked, a lot of times those will the lights on those will be red. So uh, I can't uh, I can't get into that. Can I get into? Oh, here's our first terminal. All right, so this is going to be the Junior and Humors terminal. Messages from the Inhumors Association. Let's see, uh, dear reader, your subscription to the Inhumors Association newsletter has expired. We'd like to invite you to renew your subscription. Act now, and we'll throw in a copy of the newest publication, Shovels Gazette and Quarterly. Oh boy. Let's see, this is from uh, Human Resources. Edgewater Cemetery is a property of the Spacer's Choice Company. The Spacer's Choice family takes care of its own from cradle to the grave. Graveside plots and headstones are provided by Spacer's Choice at an affordable rate. Comfortable spacious plots, custom engraved headstones and monograms, 
complimentary eulogy courtesy of the Order of Scientific Inquiry, which is, I think that's like the main religion in the game, and let your spirit rest in the privacy of a Spacer's Choice brand gravesite. Inventory logs. Burial invoice. Password required. Hack. Okay, so this is actually where your hacking skill comes in. Bypass. I got 30 XP for that. Mr. Cartoon Movie Makers, if you don't, if you have to ask what kind of lords would be blacklisted, I don't know what to tell you. Common sense should tell you what kind of things you can and can't say in a public chat. I'm just saying. Glad somebody else asked about, uh, eh, never mind. Uh, let's see. Burial invoice for Teddy's corpse was missing a hand. Deducted five bits from gravesite fee because I'm a kindly fellow. <laughs> All right. So, what do we got here? Some little items here. Oh, this is stealing. Let's steal some stuff. Oh, hey, look. Wow. It just works. It's floating. So, shovels. We don't need shovels. Nobody's, nobody's watching. We're not, uh, not going to get caught. Oh, look, it's a magazine. Examine. Okay, you'll actually get it. Early retirement. Do you want to end your years in luxury and comfort? Do you dream of walking beneath the vaulted arches of Byzantium? Which I think... Is that on this planet? I can't remember. Early retirement is finally here. Early retirement is your ticket to Byzantium. Early retirement is Chairman Rockwell and Minister Clark's gift to you. Selection for the early retirement process is by lottery. Winners enjoy an all-expense-paid trip to their new life in Byzantium, the Jewel of Halcyon. How come that sounds too good to be true? Is there a karma-type system in the game? Uh, Galaxy Punk is asking. Yes, there is. Um, if we go over to character and reputation, it's... Uh, well, actually, there's. I, I take it back. There really isn't anything like karma. There's reputation, but there's there's nothing like karma. So I can actually take. Like if I were to actually steal these things, I there's there's nothing that's gonna I'm not gonna be penalized for it. Only if I'm getting caught. And your companions don't seem to give a shit if you steal stuff or not. Cause I robbed a place blind with my companion sitting right next to me and she didn't say anything. So no, nah, sorry, I was uh confusing. Confusing karma with reputation. There does not seem to be karma. Uh, mag pick, we'll take that. Here's the bathroom. With Notice how there's like no... Uh, no privacy in the bathrooms. A bypass shunt. You need that for hacking. Bit cartridges. Uh, we can sleep in that bed. There's nothing... Oh, more bit cartridges. We'll take that. Oh. Didn't want. Didn't want the Windows key. Now let's. I don't remember how many more mag picks I needed to do this lock. Let's go take a quick look in here. Oh, it was this one? Yeah, I need need two more. Thirteen or fifteen? What? Ah ha! My lock pick skill is only thirteen. Uh-huh. All right. Um, hang on a second. Hold on a second here. Stealth. Okay. I am getting a, t a plus five. With tech. All right. Nothing for stealth. Though. I have no nothing that gives me a stealth bonus. Yeah, no working showers. That wasn't a bathroom. That was a wet room. <laughs> All right. We'll drop a save here before we... Head on into beautiful downtown Edgewater. Dredgewater. I like the loading screens. They're nice and simple. Alright. So we discovered Edgewater. Corporate guard. Spacer's choice takes care of its own. Hmm. So... This is the first time. I guess this would be like the, uh... The Megaton. Oh. 
those fireworks? Yeah, there's like fire. Oh, it's sparks. Sparks going off of something. This is so freaking cool. You got the animated sign up there. You got the planets. You got all this, the, um, like the chemtrails from the, the ships off in the distance. It's just freaking cool. What is this in here? Keep your distance, friend. Sick house is no place for Oh, travel. the sick house. I haven't been in the sick house yet. Boss won't let us have any Adrena time. Oh, I can talk to you. I appreciate the company and all, but you really ought to leave. You don't want to be seen around me. Um, why not? Because I'm sick. You don't want to associate with people in the sick house. We're not worth your time. I'm in about as much trouble as I can be. No reason you ought to be tarnished by association. People are going to talk. Uh, let's see. Why? What's going on? Figured it was obvious. I got sick. Couldn't get better on my own. Got moved here for everyone's sake. Maybe you don't know this, but there's a real simple reason you don't talk to the plagued. You don't want what we've got. Hmm. Oh, TC, if I'm going to find something, there's going to be something floating in the game. I'm, I'm definitely going to find it. Uh, let's see. Medical 5. I've got some training. I could take a look at you. Don't. Please. I could get into a lot of trouble. Hmm. Um, what kind of trouble? People trouble. Lazy worker like me getting special treatment from some out-of-town physiker like you. A physiker. People will talk. Company always tells us weak spirits lead to weak bodies. If I didn't want to fall sick with plague, maybe I should have worked harder. Maybe I should have taken more pride in my work. Hmm. Um, Fallout Act is asking, how's performance? I don't know if uh, Prey Combines are a thing in Unreal, but performance has been great. Um, I've had zero issues. The only issue I, I, re I really had is when I um, started running things through OBS earlier today, just for testing. I was getting a little bit of a frame rate drop. So I dropped down, uh, the, I had everything on Ultra. I dropped a few of the settings down to very high, and it's been, uh, it's been awesome. Um... Frame rates uh, pegged at 144 to match my monitor. So, yeah, everything's great. Load screens have been super, super quick. Um, let's see. That's ridiculous. You can't blame yourself just because you got sick. I really wish you wouldn't say those sorts of things. I told you once already. People could be listening. I'm feeling a touch faint. If you don't mind, I'd like to be alone for a spell. Hmm. Okay. So, oh, these are little things. I think they're called sprats. They're like, uh, who's this? I don't have time for this. I'm on a break right now. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. So, just a bunch of sick people in here. Hmm. Mechanical Sentry, Energy Cell, and a Shiny Servo. Oh, it looked like you have a uh, Field Scribe hat on. Yeah, vault are saints compared to these companies in this game. Hello, little friend. Oh. She's going to see me, though. What if I shut the... Can I shut the door? I shut the door and steal that mag pick. Nobody's ever going to notice. And the pep pills. What do pep pills do? That's space Destroys pep pills. Companion ability cooldown. If you need to stay alert, Spacer's Choice will give you... Give you perk. Voted number one drug in the colony. Companion ability cooldown minus 50% last 15 seconds. So apparently, I had to learn more about what companion abilities actually are. Alright, so this is apparently the sick house. And, oh, okay, the Emerald Vale Barbershop. There's a quest marker here. 
Oh man, look at this. Look how cool this is. Like the old fashioned tin ceiling. Oh man. Okay. This guy's standing right there, so I'm not gonna. Um Conrad Oh, this is uh yeah, this is one of the guys we have to talk to. Uh, for the grave digger fees. Is he some sort of doctor? Please don't touch anything. Your hands are probably crawling with germs. <laughs> Physical hygiene recapitulates moral hygiene. Cleanliness is next to lawfulness. Um, Timothy, I can show you my hands. <laughs> no, thank you. That's quite all right. I've seen enough body parts in my line of work. I'm Conrad. You will report to me if your hair fails to meet Spacer's Choice aesthetic standards. You will also report to me in the event of your death, whereupon I will clean and prepare your remains for interment. <laughs> report to me in event of your death. Um, so I'm looking to repair my ship. We'll kind of beat around the bush a little bit. A ship? Dear me. You seem to have lost the ability to distinguish between reality and fantasy. This is what happens when you let your imagination run wild. I don't approve of fantasizing. It's a dreadful habit, corrosive to the mental faculties. You ought to let the vicar take a look inside your head. The vicar? Hmm. Your vicar? Vicar Maximilian, our man from the OSI. Here to spread the message of scientism like a soothing balm upon a scientism, huh? Head. Or so you'd expect. You'll find him in our local church, probably neglecting his duties. <laughs> um, you don't seem to like him much. He doesn't seem to like us much. The vicar has not been with us long, and in his relatively short tenure in Edgewater, gives off the distinct whiff of superiority. Hmm. Um. Oh, by the way, Silas sent me to collect your dues. Ah, gravesite fees. Silas and I had talked about this at length. I thought I'd made it clear my pecuniary situation precludes the necessary restitutions. Hail science! Uh, let's see. So... I don't understand a word you said. I mean that I can't possibly pay my gravesite fees. I simply cannot afford it. I am a blemish on the prosperity of our fair settlement. When I expire, I expect Silas to toss my body into a ditch. Hmm. Um. Let's see. I don't care. Pay up. You have a very loose de definition of the word prosperity. That's some quality drama, Conrad. You should audition. <laughs> Thank you, no. I despise the serials. Tell Silas I can't afford to pay. And that I fully expect to have my medical rights revoked for this dereliction. With my apologies. Hmm. Hang on. Medical rights? Some time ago, I fell ill with the plague. By the grace of the law, and through my own hard work, I'd proven worthy of treatment. Frankly, I don't imagine I'll earn that right a second time. The barber work hasn't been profitable, you see. I've had to keep this old place running with my own savings. Hmm. So just give Silas an IOU. Not a bad idea. But I'd need some kind of collateral. My pair of lucky clippers! No, that won't do. Your idea intrigues me, but I'm afraid I don't have anything to give Silas. I'm open to suggestions. Hmm. Uh, I'll let you know if I think of anything. Uh, and I don't have time for this. Uh, we'll, th we'll think of something. I'll let you know. Much obliged. All right. I don't know if you guys can hear the background music. I'm actually going to turn up the music just to hear. The background music is very, very much Firefly-ish. Uh, cross between Firefly and some of the background music in New Vegas. It's uh, it's pretty cool. I'm actually going to... If that's too... I'm going to put up to 75%. If it's... I will do 80. If that's too much, let me know. It's just... I'm really, really digging the background music. Kind of reminds me of the first time you go through Good Springs. Um, all right, so there's the cantina. What's a town without a bar? Amelia Kim. The report? Only the part that said we ain't making our quotas. If only McDevitt's folk hadn't abandoned us, Cannery could use those extra hands. 
Nothing we can do about that. Hmm. Right, so we got. We oh, check it out. OG. The player piano. <laughs> that's freaking awesome. Um, that's going to be probably stealing. Yep. Uh, you're Winslow. Who's Winslow? Never seen you here before. You a visitor? You look important. Welcome. On behalf of the Spacer's Choice family, let me welcome you to, to uh. Where am I again? <laughs> um, you're drunk. What? No, I'm Winslow, Lester Winslow. Says so right on my permanent record. Um, just don't vomit on my shoes. Oh, it's fine. I I'm only on my third bottle. I don't start heaving up my guts as long as I can count to three. Company lets me imbibe as much zero G brew as I can afford. Even gave me a discount on account of my injury. You jealous yet? Hmm. <laughs> you were injured? Yep. Got my mitt stuck in a rotor wheel. Shredded my wrist up real good. Conrad went and sewed up my hand, but I couldn't do much about the pain. Boss was real generous to me, though. Got myself a 5% discount on Zero G Brew. After the second bottle, the only pain I feel is emotional. <laughs> uh, sounds like you need a surgeon. Hey, Conrad's a surgeon. Well, he's a barber. That's like surgery, but for your hair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, God. I, all right, let's talk to her. I have no idea. I don't know you. Um, I'm Elon Musket. Oh, actually, no. No, let's lie. I'm Alex Hawthorne, Captain of the Unreliable. Uh-huh. The Unreliable, you say? Never heard of any company supply ship with that particular name. I don't know what you're about, but this here is a Spacer's Choice drinking establishment. We're all loyal, hardworking company folk here. Hmm. So, there's something going on here I should know about? Uh, you can use Perception, Charm, and what a fine establishment it is. You really think so? <laughs> That's kind of you. I've been trying to keep the floors clean. You got no idea how long it takes to scrub the tiles. Hmm. Guess I misreckoned you. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to be curt. We just got some problems lately. I can get you a drink if you'd like. Gotta ask you to enjoy your beverage within the premises, though. Can't risk you bringing a drink over to those deserters. You understand. Hmm. Um... Writing is great, lip sync is terrible. That's the second time I've seen somebody say something about the lip I'm maybe it's YouTube, maybe the audio's out of sync on YouTube because it's perfectly fine for me. That's the only one I can think of. Um I I don't see that. I'm I'm gonna take a stab that it's YouTube. It's got something out of sync. Um Let's quote Boone and say, fine by me. Um what's on tap? Coming right up. Okay, merchant skill. Your merchant skill is equal to the value of your best dialogue skill and is used to negotiate prices when buying and selling from vendors. Alright, so this is the barter menu. She's giving me a 2% discount. Um, she can repair stuff? Wow. Alright. I'm not going to buy anything yet because she just has basically uh, food and whatnot. So let's back out of that. Oh, I almost forgot. I'm contractually obligated to recite company slogans to any visitors. You tried the best, now try the rest. Spacer's choice. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I'd like to talk to Reed. Where can I find him? Do you now? And what makes you think Mr. Thompson wants to talk to you? He's a busy man. Hmm. You want to talk to Mr. Thompson, try ignoring your duties. He'll summon you up to that great big tower atop the cannery, and you'll get yourself a proper dressing down. Hmm. Um, you say that like it's a good thing. It is a good thing. If you're not pulling your weight, you don't deserve to live here. Simple as that. Hmm. Uh, something else I wanted to ask you. Go ahead. What other options do we have here? Um. So what's your story? see how that's any of your business okay um 
This means I'm gonna pass you. And I'm not trying to judge you. I'm just curious. You're the first to ask after Metal me in some time. Pass. I'll give you that. But I don't have a story to share. Hey, Daniel. Thanks my for stopping in, man. Spacer's choice for two generations. Appreciate you I've being here. Have a great night. About Go enjoy life. the game. Wanted to work in the sciences once upon a time. Would you believe it? That was a wild fancy. Glad I disabused myself. Disabused? Um, so you had a dream of being a scientist. What happened? What happened, you ask? What always happens when you're dreaming? I woke up. I just didn't have the brains for it. Asked too many questions. Wasn't suited to the work. So I did the right thing and worked the life I was always meant to live. Now that I'm behind a bar, I can ask all the questions I want. Important ones. Like, when are you going to pay your tab? And would you like another round of cold, refreshing zero-G? <laughs> um, Science 5, asking questions is the foundation of science. Like Spacer's Choice took care of. Let's exploit some of these uh, skills a little bit. Um, best scientists ask too many. Don't talk to me that way, please. <laughs> Spent many years disabusing myself of that notion. Don't need you putting it back in my head. Hmm. Lab work ain't for me. Never was. Never will be. Spacer's Choice put me where I belong. And for that, I am grateful. Uh, it sounds like Spacer's Choice is taking good care of you. They did. They gave me a life. Gave me a purpose. This is where I belong. Hmm. So you've been scrubbing dishes your whole life? What's wrong with that? It's good, honest work. Pots and pans don't scrub themselves. Glasses don't fill themselves either. Unless you're in Byzantium. I hear everything's automated there. Not that I'll ever find out. Hmm. Thanks for the story. Not so fast. I told you about my life. Your turn to tell me about yours. So, what's your story? Hmm. You wouldn't believe it if I told you. I'm still trying to figure that out. I'll tell you some other time. Nah, um... We'll continue talking to her. I wouldn't you wouldn't believe it if I told you. That right. Hey Vendor, how you doing? Prove it. Good to see ya. Uh, I'm the last survivor of the colony ship Hope. Everyone else is frozen. I'm a crazy scientist stranded me on this planet, no way out other than a broken down ship. Um I'm an alien spirit. We can lie. Alien spirit of pure ether, inhabiting a human body to learn about your kind. Let's kinda let's tell her the truth. We'll see what happens. Um, last survivor of the colony ship Hope, everyone else is frozen. Ah, I know that serial drama. They were playing it just the other night. What was it called? The Last Spacer? Hmm. You're right. I don't believe you. I'd advise you to keep that story unsaid. Don't want people thinking you're a loon. Yeah, the whole episode with the Hope, the ship that our, your character's on, it's kind of a myth. It's, it's like an urban legend kind of thing. Let's see... So what if I just told you I just got shot in the space by a crazy scientist? Ugh, is this the start of a joke? If you want me to laugh at your jokes, it's a three-drink minimum. <laughs> um, I wish it was a joke. Honestly, I don't even know where I am. Most folk forget where they're standing after a few drinks. Seems to me you've got a head start. <laughs> Anyhow, Orbital legend, yeah. <laughs> whatever happens outside the walls is not my business. Only deserters and marauders wander out there. And I cannot tell you which I revile more. My world is these four walls, that door, and a row of mugs that need cleaning. Hmm. All right, what's this about uh, deserters? <sighs> Traitors. The lot of them. Bunch of folks decided they were tired of working and went out into the wilds to fend for their own selves. Town's already struggling to make quotas, even without that band of slackwits abandoning their posts. Bunch of lazy, shiftless rung leeches. Anyway, enough about them. What can I do for you? Hmm. I'll be on my way. Taking up enough of her time. Alright, that's cool. It's stealing. Um, is there somebody we haven't talked to yet? Cannery worker. Who are you? Cannery worker. Alright. Let's quick save there. Well, it's nighttime again. This is so cool. This looks awesome. Um... Well, he has a green... Oh! Yes, Mr. This Thompson. is Abernathy. I'm fine, Mr. Thompson. 
Never we gotta talk to him. Uh, he's staring at the wall, talking to himself. Martin Abernathy. Whoa, uh, did, uh, did Mr. Thompson send you? Hmm. Well, you tell Mr. Thompson I'll be right at my post. Tomorrow. Uh, bright and early tomorrow. Because I'm definitely not plagued. As spry as a spring chicken. <laughs> That's old Abernathy. Hmm. Um, not take it easy. Mr. T Thompson didn't send me. I heard you muttering to yourself. Let's go with perception. You want to tell me what you got, what got you so nervous? You some sort of wandering alienist? Walking into a man's own domicile, pestering him about his mental state. It's hmm. exactly what we're doing. <laughs> um, uh, so you're Martin Abernathy, huh? What? No. I mean, uh, I might be. That depends on who's asking. Well, that's convincing. <laughs> I'm, I'm not looking for trouble. I'm just here to collect your gravesite fees. Silas knows, doesn't he? That's why he sent you. That's why he wants me to pay up. He knows. Um. Let's let's lie. Yes, he told me everything. How long do you think you could keep that a secret? Sounds like he's already told you. you. May as well hear it from me. I'm dying. I'm not long for this world. The date of my expiration is fast approaching, and soon I shall be ushered through the great cannery in the skies. <laughs> it's plague. Has to be. Silas knows. He knows I got one foot in my grave, and now he wants to charge me for the other one. Hmm. Um, sorry to hear that. You're being paranoid. Uh, I'm sure it's all very tragic and heartbreaking, but just, uh, can you just pay me so I can get out of here? I'll pay your fees. I don't want any trouble from <laughs> Silas. But if you could see a way to freelancing for me, I could really use the help. Hmm. Um... Why do you think I'm a freelancer? How can I help? Depends on what you need. Let's go with that. Couple hours out of your day and some light second story work. That's all. There's a cache of anthracillin tucked away in the old community center. Powerful stuff. Oh, we got stuff. a quest. Stronger than what we got, anyway. I need you to break in, nab that medicine, and bring it back to me. Hmm. Um... Well, not so fast, Martin. I've got some questions. I'll do what I can. Um, why can't you just go get the medicine yourself? I tried medicating myself with Adrena time. Didn't do much for me, as far as I can tell. Anyway, I can't just buy medicine. Distribution of medicine is strictly prohibited to any workers beneath the acceptable margin of health. Company policy. <laughs> um... In other words, the company won't treat you because you're already sick. More like the company won't treat me because I'm not healthy enough. <laughs> um, okay, so I assume there's guards where this medicine is? You will not find any guards within sight of that old place. Marauders, on the other hand. Hmm. Um, okay, what can you tell me about the marauders? You never mentioned marauders. It is a reality of life in the Vale. Grass is brown, sky is gray, marauders are outside the walls. Hmm. Okay. Um, that's the only option we have. So you'll do it then? Um, okay, yeah, I'll do it. You oblige me with your haste. I think I feel the plague spreading. Oh, Lord, it's in my spleen now. I can feel it. Hmm. Um, let's see. Anything I should know about this community center? Just keep your head down when you're in there. Marauders have taken over. Probably tracking mud all over the archives. Hmm. Uh, you're taking an awful risk crusting me, you know. I'm. You don't even know me. I know that. But I got nobody else to turn to. Reed would have wrote me up. Constable would have locked me up and wrote me up. Could have gone to see the good vicar, but... I never did find my courage. Hey, Jade, how you doing? Good to see you. Um, all right, I think we've exhausted all the uh, conversation with Martin, so we'll, that'll do that. Uh, I'm going to assume anything we have here is that's empty. That's all stealing. You just go back and talk to yourself in the mirror. I'm just going to check out the rest of your little, little house here. Oh, we'll take that. Um, yeah. 
can interact with any of that stuff. Okay, that's anything over here. Nope, all just static. The bed looks cool. You can sleep in. His bed's not owned. All right. You're making a mistake uh, working for oh. Abernathy. Excuse me? Did you were you talking to me, um, Esther Blaine? Excuse me, I'm Esther Blaine, Spacer's Choice Actuary. I overheard your talk with Abernathy. I hope you're not thinking about getting him that medicine. Abernathy is a well-known hypochondriac. Anthracillin is wasted on him. You're better off selling it to me instead. Really? And, uh... Let's see, what do you need it for? Medical 5. He's got symptoms of something. You're saying it's psychosomatic. All I'm saying is Abernathy's worked in this town longer than some of us been alive. How do I put this gently? He's, uh... He's got a lot of cobwebs up in his attic. Hmm. So what do you need it for? I probably shouldn't tell you. Don't want you implicated for what I'm trying to do. Hmm. Um, persuade 15. Let me worry about that. It's not shady heavy. Or let's try and persuade her. Let me worry about that. All right. Here's a summary. A lot of sick people in this town. And we don't have the medicine to treat them all. Can't reach out to corporate without crossing a river of red tape. So I'm reaching out to you. Uh, let's see, Jay, um, it came out, I actually got it last night. I think it was available for sale in the States on Thursday night at midnight, but I bought it last night. Um, played it for a couple hours last night and uh, absolutely love it. Uh, let's see, Anthony's paying for me for his trouble. Can you match his offer? I get it, you need someone to smuggle medicine under the table. Hmm. Let's go with the first one that she, she can match his off. Although I don't remember he actually offered us anything. I'm paid better than Abernathy. Whatever he's giving you, I will do you one better. Hmm. I don't remember he actually, uh, we never negotiated any sort of reward with Abernathy. All right, I'll think about it. That's all I can ask of you. Um, is there any more dialogue with her? Somebody's been running around town raving about a colony ship. Plague must have gone into their brain matter. <laughs> um, so what do you do here, Esther? Oh, I'm an actuary. That means I keep tabs on a worker's living expenses. How much it costs to feed, clothe, shelter, bury, and replace your average human worker. Technically, I'm employed by the Spacer's Choice Department of Human Resources. Hmm. Um, okay. That sounds like an awesome, awesome career. Alright. Let's... Make a big boy save here. So, what do we got to do here? Long tomorrow. Where's this going to take us? Nowhere yet. It's this. Okay. Doesn't it actually show you... Uh, all right. Well, that's unfortunate. I it doesn't show you your um your quest objectives on the map. That's hmm. That's unfortunate. Um. So she wants us. So basically, this Abernathy guy wants us to go steal some medicine out of some place that's loaded with marauders, and she wants us to give it to her instead. So um, let's go. So, out of the four, we've only got, um, one person to give us their, uh, the Gravedigger's fee. So, that's Conrad. I think that was his name. Heard something inside the walls today. We have two more. Oh, there's a store here. We'll come back. Um, I want to find out if the, uh, new people... Something got you down? Nothing. Just don't want to fall sick. Spacer's choice takes care of its own. Hmm. Um, I don't know if the vendors sell 24-7, if you can trade with the vendor anytime, or if they only have certain certain hours that they... You some sort of freelancer? You're just a guard. Um, oh, this is this Ludwig guy. Let's go... Uh, 
So out of the four people, we've talked to two of them, and only one of them ha has given us money so far, so... Oh, wow, look at this. Damn, look at this. That volcano looks like, uh... The Dragonborn DLC. Was it Morrowind? When you go over to, um... Solstheim, is it? Got that volcano over there. Damn, this is awesome. The Edgewater Landing Pad. Oh, this is our, uh... Our Ludwig. We must talk to Ludwig. Thank the law. I've been requisitioning backup for months. Guess the boss finally backup. came to his senses. You ever swung a truncheon? Let me see your rifling stance. I want to make sure you're up to snuff. Oh, Galaxy Punk says, glad you're enjoying the game. This game, I'm, I'm having a blast with this. It's, like I, I said earlier, it's it's pretty much lived up to all my my hopes that it would be. I'm, I'm very happy with it. Um, let's see. What are you babbling about? Okay, you seem confused. Silas sent me over. See, it's nice to have, even though there's only four choices, at least they're not yes, no, maybe sarcastic. <laughs> there's actually something here. Um, are you okay? You seem confused. I'm talking about mechanical soldier. Cold, heartless automatons made of iron and lies. Hmm. Uh, let's see. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Just my luck. I asked for backup and the boss sends me one of them simple folk. <laughs> All right. Listen real close. Auto-mechanical. <laughs> Creatures forged in the fires of malevolence. I seen them over by the old power plant. Clattering about. Firing at the birds, orchestrating their uprising. When the swarms of mechanicals come clanging on over that hill, where will you be? Cowering beneath your cot? Or standing shoulder to shoulder with the resistance? <laughs> uh, his last little bit of dialogue just made me realize the next time I play this game, it's going to be a low intelligence character. Because that, that will probably be fun. Um... So, yeah, if, uh, let's see, just got, let's cut right to the chase. Silas sent me over, uh, you owe him his grave, your gravesite fees. I told Silas I'd pay my dues if he agreed to join the resistance. Guess this means he's finally heard the calling. Uh, yeah, other people have been saying that, Jade, and it's gotta be YouTube has things out of sync, because it's perfectly fine in my end in the game. So I, I suspect that the audio is out of sync thanks to the YouTubes. Um, oh, look, we can lie. He sure did, and he's asking for a little extra to uh, furnish the resistance with mechanical repellent. <laughs> uh, oh, we got to try that. Let's, tr let's try that. Mechanical repellent. A stroke of inspiration from the law itself. Here, I've been saving up a couple of bits for just such a project. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. I have missed what he gave us here. Uh, if your resistance needs another gun, I'm for hire. I've been gathering up a war chest over the years. Saw tuna cans, mostly. Some spacer's chaw. Few bit cards. I'll reward you for your aid. Hmm. You know, proper armies pay the enlistment fees. Enlistment fees? Yeah, I suppose. Wouldn't want to give the resistance hmm. a bad name. Uh, so what do you need me to do? They have sent a scout prowling around the junkyard just behind our beloved town. <laughs> this scout must not be permitted to return to its base of operations. Cross it off, then report back. Yeah, Joel, next thing you'll want base building and, and settlement mechanics. Jeez. Um, <laughs> uh, Jay says it's almost like Fallout 3 in Fallout 4. It's, it's very like, much like New Vegas, Jade. It's, 
it's it, it's uncanny how much like New Vegas it is. Um, from the the perk system, the, the the level up system, it's 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 pretty awesome. Uh, let's see. So if I'm going after this mechanical scout. He basically, it sounds like he wants to go shoot up some robot or something. If I'm going to go after this mechanical scout, I could use a couple of pointers. Mechanical's got a weak spot in their midsections. I think the technical term is, um, the blue glowy square thing. Hmm. Definitely playing low intelligence next time around. Um, let's see if we can ask him any more questions. Go on. Uh, what exactly do you do here? I'm Ludwig Miller. Associate Security Officer for Transportation. Officially? Unofficially? Strictly between you and me. I am the only thing standing between Edgewater and total annihilation. Uh, Randy Jones asking, how's a Fallout 4 mounting going? What's Fallout 4? I don't know what you... <laughs> no. Um, it's going slowly. Going slowly. This is... I think Outer World is going to be uh, capturing my free time for a while. Um... What's Fallout 4? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I think we had some other dialogues here. Go on. Uh, yeah, what do you have against mechanicals? You ever seen the way a mechanical just stands there? Just looking at you, scanning you with its murderous oculus. Hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what they're programmed to do. Mechanicals have been programmed to eliminate the human race. They've been programmed to replace us. Hmm. First, they will rob us of our jobs. And once they have taken away our livelihoods, they will take away our very lives. Yeah, this guy's a kind of thing against sense, it sounds like. Um, is there anything else we can ask him? Go on. I think that was it. Nope, that was it. Okay, let's take a peek around here. So, th this... Is this a location... Edgewater. This is a landing pad, so I'm going to guess that once we uh, get our ship unborked... Oh, we have a workbench here. Cool. Well, once we get our ship unborked, that we could probably... Uh... I don't have any mods yet for this, do I? I can probably land our ship here. Yeah, I don't have any modifications yet, so... Um... I think we're just going to hold off on that for now. Yeah, I can't do anything with that. Oh, he's standing right there. He's standing right there, so I can't steal anything. Excuse me. Thank you. Let's take a poke around here. Oh! Oh, I heard about vending machines. I'd heard about these. Um... Oh, DGX says, don't confuse Underworld with Outer World. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, vending machines. Yeah, vending machines offer a variety of items to purchase, mostly from one company. A hack skill of 20 or higher allows you to sell items at the vending machine. So, you can... So, you have to have a certain hacking skill to sell. That's interesting. Uh, restricted items on a vendor can only be purchased when you have a high enough reputation with the associated faction or a hack skill of 40 or higher. Okay, so this is a Spacer's Choice machine. Does it have... What do we have in the way of ammo? I've only got 166 bits. So... Hmm. Let's, uh... Whoop, that's not what I... Hmm. Alright, so what I wanted to see was... What do I have for ammo here? This... So the hunting rifle looks like it takes, uh... Okay, yeah, that takes the heavy ammo. I'm gonna buy some heavy ammo for my hunting rifle. I like that there's only two kinds of ammo. Keep, kind of keeps it nice and simple. Well, actually, there's three. There's the energy cells. Oh, look, they're called Firefly. Energy cells are called Firefly. Hmm. wonder where they got that from. So, let's, uh, actually, let's, can I, I see, I don't have, I have not yet unlocked the ability to sell to a vending machine. All right. 
how many of these bad boys can I get? Oh, okay. It defaults to what you can buy. Well, I'm only going to buy like 10. Let's buy 10. Cool. Awesome. And this is a TNL. TNL exotic assets. Oh, look at these. Okay. So this is another one of the uh I wonder what TNL means. It's another one of the corporations. And they all have their own little jingle when you activate the uh the machine. So this is Spacer's Choice Thought Off Shotgun. Yeah, the hunting rifle's TNL. Have to figure out what that all is. Another vending machine. Board approved Halcyon vending machine. Bullets and things. So this is a mix of everything. Oh, look. You can buy Mr. Ouch. <laughs> it's a melee weapon mod. Attack increases the damage dealt from a power attack. Mr. Ouch. On a backpack. A backpack mod for your armor. That's pretty cool. Uh, what else we got here? Grenade launcher. Damn. Grounded. Uh, increases body armor, helmet armor rating against shock damage. Okay. Yeah, I can't. I can't even buy any of that stuff yet. Okay. This is another. Uh... Yeah, I vaguely remember those, uh, that kind of thing. Fiber says the vending machines are totally Borderlands. I think I played two hours of the original Borderlands and just, it, I just couldn't get into it. But I do remember the, uh, I do remember the machines. Can I get up here? Oh, what are you? Little sluggy thing. A breadworm. Breadworm blood. Oh. So. Blood is thick and viscous, and you have absolutely no use for it whatsoever. <laughs> but I can sell it. So, one of the things was pre sliced. Pre sliced bread. I thought it was bread. I thought it was actual bread. It tastes fresh because it was. This is the pre-sliced bread. Those things I just killed. I thought that was actually bread. That they were just having a slick... Oh, hello. Oh, th oh look. There's 20 heavy ammo. I'll take that. I thought bread was actually bread. That they were just being cutesy with the spelling. Alright, so... Oh, I wanted the journal. Let's... Die, robot, die. What's this? Ludwig, a ground... A guard watching over the landing pad south of Edgewater, is convinced that auto mechanicals are planning to wipe out humanity. He's asked you to help him wage a secret war against the mechanical menace. Reports that he spotted a forward scout of the mechanical army north of the landing pad. Test your metal as he requests to dispose of it in the name of humanity. Yeah, see, that doesn't actually show... Is that it? I guess that's it. Well, the game has its only... Uh, only 120-some-odd meters. Let's uh, go check that out. Because it's not that far. Um... No, yeah, Jay, they're not, uh, there's no mod support yet. I mean, I hope they do at some point. Although Nexus, I was saying earlier, Nexus did put a, uh, a mod section for Outer Worlds up this morning, but it's really just a couple of hacky things, just replacers. One replaces something in the main, uh, in the loads, the main load screen when you launch the game, and the other one basically enables you to turn the console on. Oh, wow. Look at the lava flow. How freaking cool is that? 
Well, when I say hack, it's not, it's more or less uh, just replacing a file, and then there's um, the, uh, let's switch over to the, uh, actually, let me do this here real quick. The um, ability to activate the, the console is, is kind of a hack. There's a, there's an, an external application you have to install, and you have to, uh, I think there's like a config file you have to change. Yeah, the, uh, now that lava flow kind of reminds me of, um, the end of, uh, the how was it, uh, that horrible Star Wars movie. Was that the first one? No, that was, re was it Revenge of the, the second, the second of the horrible Star Wars trilogies. There's, um, oh, Christ, what the hell is it? I'm forgetting the name of it. There's a really awful, awfully dubbed version of it. The hell is the name of it now? At the scene where um, Obi Wan and Anakin Skywalker are doing the final battle. But there's a jet. There's a Chinese dub version of that. It's called what the hell is it? Star War the Third Backstroke of the West. I think it's called. It's it's like an English overdub of that. It's 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 in Chi Chinese dubbed version of it. It's it, oh my god! It's hilarious. Alright, so I guess this is it here, huh? That's what we got a damage mechanical. He's not even hostile. He's not even hostile. Searching for repair bay. Error. Navigation oh. systems failed. Unable to comply. Hmm. Oh, Oh, look at this. So if you can't spat if you can't pass the speech check, it's just locked out. That's pretty cool. Um, are you damaged? Damage to navigation systems detected. Attempting to return to designated repair bay. Error. Navigation systems failed. Hmm. This is a junkyard, not a repair bay. Navigation systems have determined this location as Spacer's choice. Designated mechanical repair bay. Attempting to misdirect or confuse a spacer's choice mechanical <laughs> is a punishable offense. Please report yourself to your supervisor. Um, I don't have time for this. Alright, let's just take him out. Oh, the, uh, reload on this is pretty low. Oh, I almost died there. Actually meant to... Uh, I'm going to take this right out of there. Oh. Um, how do I get this out of my... I guess I don't. All right. He's got some good stuff. Energy cells, a coolant tank. I'm going to guess that's just junk. Armor parts, nice. Yeah, I actually meant to go for my pistol. And for some reason, I still had the, uh... Yeah, I almost died there. Anything else worthwhile in this junk? Ooh, what's this? Oh, look at this. Look at the artwork on the box. How freaking cool is that? Standard rounds, Falcon standard rounds. So that's the uh, the heavy ammo. That is freaking awesome. I love that. The best seller, frozen dinner all in one. Fried chicken, mashed spectrum potatoes, and spiced mock apples. Oh boy, good eating. Mock apple cider, purple berry fizzy tea. Gourmet Saltuna Filets. Oh, and there's some more of that pre-sliced bread. Hiya. Oh, light pistol. Nicopad? What the hell's a Nicopad? Nope. 
Nicotine, high ranged weapon spread. Ranged weapon sway minus 50%. Nicotine low, ranged weapon spread plus 15%. Okay, so it reduces the sway and increases the weapon spread for 30 seconds. Pretty cool. Um, I love the artwork in this game. Holy crap. Yeah, I'm getting some ideas. <laughs> Definitely getting some ideas. I'm going to make a save here, though. Um, all right. I kind of wanted to repair that little guy, but... Um, Extendo site. Oh, I already have one of those on my, uh... Oh. Can I just take it? I guess that was... I didn't actually mean to open that up. That's the first weapon mod that we found. Oh, what's... I hear... The ambient sound in this... Is pretty wild. You can't tell where anything is. It sounded like there was uh, some sort of creature right where I was standing. That robot will never need repairing again. That's that's exactly why I took him out. I just wanted to get this quest over with while I'm here. Assuming this is all I need to do is go back to this guy. Now, I don't know if you guys can hear that. That creature sound off in the distance. Sounds just like a dragon from Skyrim. Sounds just like it. I didn't want to have to go and get my repair skill up just to have this quest hanging on. I'd rather just take care of it. Um, I killed your robot there, uh, Ludwig. Bring us honor, soldier. Uh, you won't have to worry about that scout anymore. You beat that scout to scrap with its own legs? Pulled its optic cables out its headcase? Actually, don't tell me. I'd rather use my imagination. You're a passing fair soldier, I will confess. But you are one. And the enemy is... A legion? legion. There's no legion here. ...is an equalizer. A weapon to strike fear in their cold, mechanical hearts. Cantina. Lavatory. Behind one of the toilets. That's where I've kept it hidden all these years. There goes Joel stealing my lines again. <laughs> Yeah, I every time I say that, people kind of look at me um, like it's something I shouldn't say, but it's the truth. It's the truth. Um, so you hid your secret weapon in a lavatory. Sharp, ain't it? The lavatory is the very last place a mechanical has need to enter. Hmm. I'll let you know if I find it. On the double soldier. Don't want the bartender poking around in there with a mop. Hmm. Alrighty. Okay, so... Somehow I had a feeling that it wasn't going to be that simple. Oh, we haven't gone in here yet. Take those bits. More ammo. More bits. Yeah, I need more uh, mag picks. Trip teas. Assorted flavored teas brewed from tripicali, tripicali leaves. Mind attributes plus one last 30 seconds. Let's see. I keep hitting the wrong button here, but... Uh, mock apple juice. Fast ration pill. Provides flavors... Flavorless sustenance only. Carbohydrates plus 200% natural health regeneration. We'll take it all. Tartarus sauce. Hey, there's a mag pick. We'll take you. Take... Just take all the things. What we don't use, we can always sell. I still don't have enough for that. Damn. What about these gizmos over here? Oh, I keep hitting R instead of E. Okay. So I guess we gotta go back to the, um, to the bar. And look for a weapon. 
So where are we on with the other quest here? Hang on a second. Find Ludwig's weapon. Use the event to make a call uprising. Trust the weapon to you to aid the crusade. The weapon should be in the bathroom of the Edgewater Cantina. And then we have to go... Oh, okay, so there's... We have to go talk to this Phyllis about her uh, her gravesite fee. Let's go get the gun first. I'm sorry. I'll just be a minute. You had a minute. Next one comes out of your pay. He's off the threats, friend. I'm going. Hmm. Boss's orders. We all got quotas to make. And on your smoke break too long there, friend? So I know that there is a actually a vendor here, too, we need to go and look at. Where are we going? Oh. Oh, and that's the, uh, the constable. We're supposed to go there. Oh. Wanted posters. This is cool. Wanted Bertie Cotton. From the Spacer's Choice Department of Retirement, a writ of execu- The Department of Retirement handles execution orders. Lovely. A writ of execution effective immediately for Bert Cotton. Former vicar stationed in Edgewater Vicarage. No longer in good standing with Halcyon Branch Order of Scientific Inquiry. At large and dangerous. Wanted for destruction of company property, murder of company workers in good standing, sedition, and unauthorized use of medical supplies. Generous bounty, payment on delivery, must be able must be able to sign your own name. <laughs> See Constable Rees for details. Must be able to sign your own name. Uh, let's see. Gilam Gil Antrim from the Space Governors Guild of... Rid of execution, effective immediately, yada, yada, yada. Wanted for destruction of company property, murder of company workers in good standing, theft, and unauthorized use of medical supplies. Seems to be a common theme here. Doc Maybell. Doc Maybell Burgess. Spacer's Choice Department, rid of execution. All the same charges. Destruction of company property, murder of company workers in good standing. So if they're a company worker in bad standing... Is it, a, is it a crime still? Something tells me no. Vandalism and unlicensed practice of medicine on seditious criminals. Generous bounty. Payment on delivery. You must be able to sign your own name. See Constable Reese for details. Alright, well, uh... Yeah, that's why I want to play low intelligence. That just opens up too many, uh, too many options here. Alright, let's head in here. Get that gun. Oh, yeah, we didn't, um... She's there. Oh! We didn't go back here before. Okay, this is... This is locked. We, we need to open that up. Aha! Uh -huh. Ludwig's... Ah! There it is. Oh! Alright. Oh, we have to go back to Ludwig. All right. Let me take that level up. Oh, this is so cool. All right, so... We're now level three. Let's dump some more into ranged. I'm actually going to put one in the defense just because. A couple in the dialogue. Couple in the stealth. I'm gonna put one more in the leadership, and I got two left. Let's put the rest into tech. Apply those. And we don't get a perk this time around. And we have to go back to uh to Ludwig. Actually, I'm gonna make a big boy save here. This is where I gotta go. Yeah, you can be a low intelligence character, Legionary. We don't judge. Joel's right. We'll still like you. Oh, this is the completely wrong side. Yeah, I like the load screen art. 
is uh, like a a dissection chart of some of the wildlife, some of the creatures. It's pretty cool. Sometimes I wonder what I'm doing with myself. We should keep our voices down. Gosh, she sounds like... Somebody's been rambling about some colony ship. Wonder what that's about. Gosh, she sounds just like one of those raiders in Nuka World. When you walk past them, this has only got one rule, don't get caught. Did you hear about Wilson? Damn Nuka Cola song stuck in my head again. Sounds just like her. Oh, this is cool. Look at this. Oh. We definitely don't. <laughs> uh, look like we picked the wrong time to get lost, friend. That's definitely not the way we want to go. <laughs> Damn Nuka Cola song stuck in my head again. Uh, oh, these are awesome. Chairman Rockwell and Minister Clark, the team to lead Halcyon. These look almost like constructivist propaganda posters. Old Soviet-era constructivist posters. Help the Chairman and Minister Clark defeat our foes. Descent in our midst. The enemy seeks to destroy our way of life. These are so cool. Alright, so which... It's telling me which way I got to go that way, but that's not the way to go to the, um, the landing dock. I think it's this way. If it's not, I'm just going to fast travel. I think this is the one, though. We have to go out. Yes, no, maybe. Yep, this is where we got to go. Oh, this looks amazing. All right. Bring us honor, soldier. Uh, I found the package you mentioned. Feast your eyes, soldier. This here is a genuine Spacer's Choice injury customizing unit. Designed to deliver a lethal blast of electrical discharge. I call it the Hand of the Law. You ever want to see a mechanical <laughs> flailing around like a grounded fish? You stick a couple thousand volts in its guts. With compliments from old Ludwig. Cool. Sounds like fun. Fun? This ain't some quarterly performance review, <laughs> soldier. Ours is a grave and sacred duty. Time's come for you to journey down into the black heart of the enemy's camp. I'm talking about the old geothermal plant. Unfortunately, the old plant lies outside my board-given jurisdiction. You'll need to get a passcode from the boss, Reed Thompson. Hmm. Um, so what exactly do you expect I'll find down there? I need you to get us the brain of a mechanical. Well, not exactly a brain. Anatomically speaking, what we're looking for is a logic module. Hmm. Um, and how am I supposed to get one of these? logic modules there's the rub if a mechanical breaks down the logic module fries so you can't rip one out of its corpse you're gonna have to find an intact model somehow hmm um sounds simple enough if you die horribly I will pour out a can of zero G to your memory hmm um is there any other dialogue we can get with him Go on. Nope, that's it. So somehow I, I suspected that wasn't the end of the quest. So he actually wants us to go... Uh, so this Reed guy, is actually, we have to go and talk to them. This Reed Thompson, I think that's who we have to go to... to talk to about a power regulator. Talk to whoever runs the town. I think that's who runs the town. So... We have to go to the geothermal plant, wherever the hell that is. But we're not going to do that right now. We're going to go and talk to this Reed Tops guy. Actually, I'm going to take another quick break, guys. We're going... Uh, it's for three. Is it really 5.30? Ay, caramba. We started at 2.30. Yeah, we've been going for th three hours now. All right. Well, I'm going to take a quick break since it's been a while. And uh, we'll do a little bit more. I think maybe another... Because I'm, I'm really getting hungry. We'll go... 
figure out what to do next with this uh, stranger in the strange on see if we can find out where the power regular is we got to go to and then we'll see what time it is uh, I'm actually kind of getting hungry so quick break we uh, will do a little bit more and uh, catch in just a minute <clears throat> Excuse me. We are back. I just see that Jade's taken off. If you're still here, Jade, good to see you as always. What the hell's that? Oh, look at that little ship going. Well, thanks for stopping in, Jade, if you're still here. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Anti Cleo. All right, so. Oh, this is so cool. So we are just going to continue on with. Um,
Oh, no, let's go take care of the grave quest first. Let's let's kind of do this here. We still have to go talk to Phyllis. Works as a supervisor in the Edgewater Cannery. Actually, hang on a minute. Our quest is telling us to go in here anyway, so I'll tell you what, let's do... We'll take care, we'll go talk to this Phyllis, and then we'll do what we gotta do here, wherever that might be. This is the Saltuna Cannery. Emerald Vale. Oh, the, si the signage is so damn cool. They've really got the vintage signage vibe down. Damn. Okay, nobody at the reception desk. So I'll just steal all the things. And let's take a look at this terminal. Terminal access logs. The Edgewater Saltuna Canyon facility strictly adheres to Spacer's Choice standards of health and safety. Notice, schedule your sick leave with your Spacer's Choice foreman and or supervisor. Be considerate towards other members of the Spacer's Choice family. Allow two to four weeks to process your approval for your scheduled sick leave. Lost hours must be compensated to the company. See Reed if you're having trouble paying for your sick leave. We'll try to arrange wage deductions instead. Remember, work invigorates the spirit. Sickness in the body reflects sickness in the mind and sickness in the character. If you find yourself falling ill, it may be time to schedule a meeting with a local vicar. With our local victor. Vicar. Wow, so you have to schedule your sick time in advance. That's awesome. Tossball card, Glenn. So tossball must be like the sport. We're going to steal that. Use. Oh, I wonder if that's where I got to... Hang on a second. Let's... Yep, that's... Okay, that's for our other quest. Here. Let's take care of this... The grave quest first. Oh, boy. Look at this place. Damn. So this is the cannery. It, uh, certainly puts Long Neck Lukowski's to shame. Hey, Colin, how the hell are ya? <laughs> oh, everybody, quick, Colin's here. Stop having fun. Nah, how you doing, man? Oh, this game has autosave, so... I think I've only saved a handful of times, to be honest. <laughs> Good to see you, man. Uh, we are having a blast with this game. It is fan freaking tastic. Let's see, there's uh Wait a minute, this is a Saltuna... Wait a minute, why are there dead sprites here? Or sprats? Hmm. They're supposed to be... Oh, I will close this so I don't get caught. They're supposed to be whatever the salt tuna is. It looks like it's supposed to be fish. The sprats are like rats. I don't know why there's a bunch of sprat carcasses over there. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, Phyllis Granger. That's the one that we need to uh, go talk to. Um, let's check her messages from R. Thompson. I think that's the guy that's in charge of the town. I'm um, having. I played this game, uh, Colin, for a couple hours last night just to make sure I get the graphic settings and everything right, and just kind of get a feel for it. It's it's a blast. It is. It's gonna sound trite, but it's it's really li it's it lived up to everything I wanted it to be, and I'm completely blown away by it. It's it's a, it's it's a lot of fun. The writing alone is just fantastic. Um, some some of this terminal stuff here. So, subject medical treatment, 
Phyllis, owning to your hard work and positive attitude, I've sanctioned your access to medical treatment in the event of contagion. As you know, the company has not provided us with enough medicine to treat every worker. I wish I could treat every member of the Spacer's Choice family who fell ill to this plague, but I cannot. Medical privileges are strictly merit-based. Please do not under any circumstance distribute your ration of medication to any other worker. We're all in this together. Personal files. Okay, so this is password protected, but I can use my hacking skills to bypass. Nice. Uh, password accepted. Continue. Last entry. Theodore buried last night. Reed asked me not to report his death in our quarterly. Sounds fair to me. I was asked to prepare a statement or something for the other workers. Been thinking about it. Don't know what to tell them. Don't end up like Theodore. Do your work. Show up. Wear a smile and you'll get your medical privileges. Is that a start? Hmm. I think that's it. Alright, cool. Says, I knew Obsidian wouldn't let us down. Hype intensifies. I was trying not to get hyped. I set my expectations very low, and wow, I'm just completely, completely blown away by this. Um, so this is Phyllis Granger. This is who we have to talk to. You the new worker? Whatever. Make it quick, Tenderfoot. I'm busy. Um. Wow, we can get right to the chase. So um, let's kind of chatter up a little bit first. I'm guessing you're the foreman. Foreman Granger, mind those words don't come out of your mouth unless preceded by yes or right away or thank hmm. you. Well, in that case, gravesite fees. I'm here to collect. Shit. Silas still on about that. Here, take the fees. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell Reed I was late on my payment. Hmm. Yes, uh, Colin, the, um, the residents of this town have to rent their gravesites. And the quest I'm on now is for the town grave digger to collect the fees from the people who are late on their gravesite rental payments. Because, um, you know, it's a company town, literally. Everything and everyone is owned by the company. Um, but Phyllis, these papers aren't signed in your name. Because they're not my fees and not my gravesite. Guy I worked with shot himself. I paid the bill. Hmm. You have to pay for your neighbor's gravesite fees? If you're not familiar with board law, you ought to be. Law requires delinquent gravesite fees to be paid by the deceased party's closest living relative, which meant me. Shame, though. Eugene was a good worker. Just, just incinerate me and sprinkle me into the spaghetti sauce. <laughs> um, but you said this guy shot himself. Woke up one morning and put a round through his upper story. Can't imagine why. The kid was doing all right at his desk. We all thought he was an upstanding receptionist. Oh. Just between the two of us, I'm pretty shocked his weapon didn't misfire. Spacer's choice handguns aren't the most reliable. <laughs> That's why there's no receptionist, because he shot himself. Um, it's an awful thing to say, uh, you know, must be tough losing family. Um, let's go with that one. Eugene wasn't family. I thought you said you were his closest living relative. That's an awful thing to say about your closest relative. I thought you said, uh, he was your closest living relative. Yeah, I was the closest living person relative to his body at time of death. I'm the one who found him, you see, so I pay the fines. Suicide's a crime. The legal term is irreparable damage to company property. What Eugene did to himself was vandalism. <laughs> So if you commit suicide, you're damaging company property. <laughs> uh, you can't be serious. I'm plenty serious. In fact, I'm a little upset Eugene didn't think things through. In other words, Edgewater would have been penalized pretty hard. Whatever Eugene was worth as an asset, we would have had to pay out of pocket to Spacer's Choice. Um... But he was a person, not an asset. Well, excuse you. I'll have you know, Eugene was an asset to us all. May his Adams be commended to the law. All I know is Silas asked me for Eugene's gravesite fees, which means he was approved for burial, which means his papers went through, which means the town's in the clear. I'm just glad to put this whole ugly affair behind me. Eugene can rest his bones in peace, and the rest of us can get on with our own lives. All right, I think we're done here. I'll, I'll, I'll let you get back to work. 
Alright, so that... So we still have to get the money from Conrad, but we actually have to go and talk to, uh, talk to Silas. So before we do that, I think we're kind of done here. I just want to poke around here a little bit more too. Uh, looks like we had to take that elevator up to do, um, our main quest bit here. Um, talk to, oh, hey, oh, we got to show this to Colin. Colin, see this ladder here? You can climb it. Yes, we have climbable ladders. It's some super secret obsidian technology. See that ladder? You can climb it. They've somehow bridged the ladder technology gap. Okay, that's the way we came in. That explains why there's no receptions, because he was the guy that offed himself. It is sorcery, but I'm telling you. I almost looked like a power armor station for a second. Tez 6 better have climbable ladders, that's all I'm saying. Anything else here we can go poke around? Any other little... Yeah, see, this is supposed to be a cannery for Saltuna, but there's all these Sprat corpses everywhere. What's up with that? Oh! Alright, well that goes to the town. Oh, what's... Only you can protect fourth quarter profits. <laughs> uh, so this looks like a, a break room. Okay, there's another vending machine. Have I... Oh, hello. What do we got here we can steal? Let's close the door so we don't get... Better have fishing and climbable ladders. <laughs> yeah, see that, that ladder over there? You can climb it. Oh, what's the sign say? Employer rights under the Biased Labor Standards Act. Wage determined by merit of your work. Overtime may result in higher pay if the quality of said work is considered exemplary. Your employer has the right to dock your pay should you damage any facilities or equipment. It is your responsibility, not your employer's, to avoid workplace hazards. Helsing Colony Department of Labor. We got here. I'm just gonna take all the ooh, a revolver. So the hunter's kit increases ranged weapon skills. Oh, it's an armor mod. Oh, yes, please. Um, let's go with this. Hey, DJX, good to see you, man. Oh, oh no. Oh. Maybe that... I hope that doesn't mean I got caught. The door's closed. See you later, DJX. I may have just committed a crime. <laughs> uh, trust packing... Or trust packing, yeah. Trespassing, lockpicking, hacking, and murder are all considered legal activities. Avoid being seen. All right, I I think that's just a tutorial warning. I don't think I actually got caught. But uh, take it easy, DJX. Good to see ya. Thanks for stopping. And TC Games, all you guys bailing, man. Hey, TC, it's good to see you, man. Always a pleasure. Appreciate you stopping in. Hey, I gotta go eat too, TC. Don't worry about it. I'm actually downed a couple of cookies. Yeah, see, there's nobody here to catch me, so. But I will be uh, heading out to eat myself shortly, so. I appreciate you guys stopping in. Dehydrated water tail. We're just going to steal all the things. What's this? Okay. Um. Notifications lost and found. Found. One left hand severed at the wrist. Some bone damage. People, this is our second unscheduled amputation in as many months. <laughs> Please exercise caution and safety around machinery. Maintenance fees will be deducted from your pay. That's that's awesome. I thought there was another office upstairs too. Loose lips, loose lips, pink slips. Well, we can't get in that way. Oh. Good to have a good working game. Yeah, it's 
it just works. You press the launch button and uh, and it just works. All right, so this is like a generator room or something down here. Hey, more of this black magic. Yeah, and Colin, um, when I was playing last night, your companions will actually climb down the ladder and follow you. They don't just teleport. They actually fully animated climbing up and down ladders. It's 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 truly truly evil black magic. Oh oh oh! You know what? All right, so this is the power regulator that we need for our ship. We can't just pick it up, though, because we will die. See all those sparks? Let's, let's make a save here. We can't just take this. We actually have to turn the power off first, I think. Yep. Yeah, we can't, uh, we can't do that. I just wanted to make sure I wouldn't die. Uh, let's see. So we actually have to figure out how to extract that thing without getting zapped. Um, query, geothermal facility. Emerald Vale region is powered by Spacer's Choice geothermal facility. Spacer's Choice is proud to bring the colonists of Halcyon moderately innovative technology at a reasonable price. Spacer's Choice, the best you can afford. <laughs> uh, disengage... Ooh. Disengage power regulator. I don't know what that does. I'm gonna wait. I, I don't know what that does. And I don't want the Spacer's Choice people to, uh... To hate me. I poke around a little bit more. But that's... That's what we need. We need the power regulator for our ship. Okay, this is the lost and found terminal. Yeah, we looked at that already. All right, I. Whoop! That's not what I wanted to do. All right, I just want to run upstairs quick because I thought there was another room up there. We didn't look at. Almost like the game was built with fully designed environments that didn't need to make room for unwanted and helpful crafting systems. Exactly. And there's, uh, no making your own fun. Yeah, I thought I saw another door up here. Um, I'm actually gonna close the door here. Um, what's this? Mechanical Engineering, Volume 2. What the hell is that? Oh, we still haven't un uh, unlocked anything else for our uh, inhaler, either. Hmm. Quest item. Oh, it's a quest item? So what do we got for quest items here? Okay, that's our ID card. Those are our three bits of gravesite fees. Guide to Engineering, Mechanical Engineering Volume 2. Young Spacer's Guide to Mechanical Engineering Volume 2. A dense technical primer on mechanical engineering published by Spacer's Choice. Volume describes the process of repairing and dismantling common models of auto mechanical workers. Oh, cool. So you can actually inspect items. Look at the models on that. Damn. That looks, that looks really cool. Alright, see what else we got in here. Another terminal. The, I kind of wish that the terminals actually had names on them. Like that lost and found terminal. If that had said lost and found terminal on it, I would have known that I've already read it. But, minor thing. So this is terminal access company notifications. From the Office of Reed Thompson, Outpost Administrator, symptoms of infection have now reached a critical mass. I've instructed our staff to transform the old domicile into a sick house. Okay, that's the place where we ran in all those... That's the house with all the sick people. Go figure. Plague is a reality of life on the frontier, and as spacers, we are expected to face up to reality. And the reality is that we do not carry enough medicine to treat you all. 
Medical treatment is a privilege, not a right. We must strive every day to, de to demonstrate our worthiness of that privilege. If you find yourself suffering the symptoms, if you find yourself suffering the symptoms of the of incipient plague, of incipient plague, the best thing you can do for yourself and your family is to down your jumpers and come to work. <laughs> work fortifies the spirit. Physical illness recapitulates spiritual weakness. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, I cannot. Okay, I've used all my mag picks already. Whoa, hello. That's an actual piece of armor. That... Hang on a minute. I'm... Yeah, I, I haven't changed armor yet. Whoops. I'm still wearing the, uh, the hibernation suit. This... Oh, wow. Standard troop armor. Armor rating a 9. This only is a 3. Oh, yes, please. Plus 7 hack. Factory stock armor plating. So it actually already has a modification on it. That weighs 5. This weighs... It weighs twice as much. Wow. I, that's the first time we've found a piece of armor, I think, in a, in a container. All right, that's cool. We'll take the brew. Um, yeah, we'll just take that. I think that's a bypass shunt. Yeah, that's good. Nope, I didn't get it. All right, well, that was worth the trip. Black magic. All right, um... So, do I have... Alright, yes. So, let's... Yeah, see? It implies that Saltuna is fish. But there are a bunch of sprat bodies all over the place. Maybe much like Lon Lukowski's. It's not really, uh, what's advertised on the tin. So, this is apparently some elevator. Let's take this up. Spacer's Choice Elevator Music. I love it. The Grease Monkey, Argo? I'm sorry, Mr. Thompson, sir. You asked why it's taking so long to fix. The answer's technical. Don't apologize. Just try using small words. <laughs> the cans bust open in the oven because she's set to cook saltuna, which isn't what we've got. Mr. Thompson? I think there's someone here to see you. So, Focus, Miss Holcomb. You and I are still talking. Let's start over. Walk me through the process. Show me where it's going awry. Kind of well, listen sure. to them for a minute. It's uh, mostly on account of what we're feeding into the mechanism. It puts food in cans. We have food, we have cans. Why won't it work like we need? She's expecting Saltuna of a certain size. We're filling the cans with... Well, there you go. Not fish. They... They're they're filling the cans with the sprats, not the fish. Uh huh. Oh, look at the. Oh, seems we've got a guest. I was gonna look at the sign. Really now, Parvati, I do wish you'd spoken up. Uh, she did. I do apologize. I was given no forewarning of your arrival, or I might have welcomed you at the gates myself. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Are you Reed? I was told I should talk to you. You must be the boss, the town boss. Uh, are you Reed? I was told I should talk to you. I'm Reed Thompson, outpost administrator. I cannot help but notice you are not in uniform. Hmm. Um, let's see. Uniform, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't work for Spacer's Choice. Of course not. I don't have that kind of luck. Seems I allowed my excitement to run away with my wits. Been a few seasons since we've had a visitor pass through. Hmm. Yeah, see, look at the textures on that suit. 16 times the detail. Has 16 times the detail. Um, I actually need a power regulator for my ship. Only regulator we've got is hooked up to the town transformer. Mr. Tobson ain't liable to be keen on dismantling it. I beg your pardon. I am most emphatically not keen on any such thing. I can't let you have our power regulator, but I happen to know of another one. 
and I happen to know exactly how you may retrieve it without frying yourself in the process. Yeah, I kind of found out about the whole frying thing. <laughs> I had a feeling that's what was going to happen. Uh, so we could actually uh, just shut the power off here and grab that one, but uh, uh, let's see what he says about frying myself. Oh, yes. Saw someone put his hands on a regulator while the power was running. His legs were still twitching when we That was me. Him. I just did that. There's a power regulator in the old botanical lab. It's mostly abandoned, so all that power is being squandered. Go down to the geothermal plant. Reroute power from the botanical district over to us. Once their power is shut down, you can have their regulator and be along on your way. The geothermal plant. That's where we have to go get the robot brain. Hmm. Um. So what do you mean it's mostly abandoned? What do you mean? I was not entirely sure how to tell you this. The botanical labs are not legally inhabited, but there are people who live there. Hmm. What a surprise. I never would have guessed. Um, I don't think these people would take kindly to losing their power. I mean, marauders? Marauders aren't people. Um, let's go with, uh, I don't think these people take kindly to losing their power. No, I do not imagine they will be pleased. But like a parent disciplining an unruly child, you will be doing them a kindness. The people living in the botanical labs. They're deserters. Former workers. I need them back at their posts. I need them to come home. Hmm. Why exactly is... Th why? Tell me what you need me to do. Why? And if you want me to solve your deserter problem, I charge by the head. <laughs> hey, Galaxy Punk. Catch you later. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably gonna, gonna quit here myself shortly, but uh, appreciate you stopping in, man. We'll definitely will be playing this again. We'll, we'll catch you next time. Um, so why do you need them to come back? Edgewater is struggling. We haven't hit our production quota in years. If we don't meet our quotas this year, the company might shut us down for good. I need those workers back at their stations. Hmm. So... I've seen Edgewater. I don't blame these workers for walking out. Neither do I. The fault was entirely mine. I pushed them too hard. You think? My hope is that by cutting off their power, you will convince those deserters to come back to town. Before you go to the plant, I want you to stop by the botanical lab. Speak to their leader, Adelaide. Tell her the power's about to go. And that it's time her band of deserters came back to town. Hmm. And, uh... See what I can do to help. How will I recognize Adelaide? Adelaide's older than the other deserters. She's dignified. Kindly. From what I understand, her camp looks to her for leadership. Hmm. And, uh, his workers must have left town for a good reason. That reason was me. I asked too much and pushed too hard. But I am ready to make amends if they are willing to return to the fold. We belong to one community. The Spacer's Choice family. If we dissolve into factions, then we will all perish separately. Adelaide will understand that. Hmm. Uh, I can't make any promises. Of course, I understand completely. Here, let me give you the passcode oh, nice. to the geothermal plant. A sign of good faith for so politely listening to me as I ramble on. Right, so, oh. Are you setting off oh. for the veil? Because I know my way around. I, I mean, in case you want a guide. I mean, if that's all right with you, Mr. Thompson. Sir. I hesitate to part ways with Miss Holcomb, but I cannot deny that she is talented and may prove useful to you. Hmm. Sure, I could absolutely use the company. Great! I got my wrenches and diagnosticators and hairpins and engine tape, so I'm all set. Well, I am glad to hear that. Best of luck to you, and thank you again for your help. It is a lot to ask of a stranger, I know. Okay, I guess that's it for now. Yes, we got our first companion. You've gained a companion. They are characters that join you in your adventures and help in a variety of ways. Companions provide combat support. They uh, Their skills enhance your skills. They increase your carrying capacity. You can unlock special companion combat abilities with the Inspiration skill. 
Cool. All right, so if uh, her voice sounded at all familiar, uh, Parvati, Parvati Holcomb is voiced by, I think it's Ashley, Ashley Birch, who in Fallout 4 does Tina DeLuca, Roxy, and Cricket. And if you listen to the way she, she has her voice inflections, you can totally hear Cricket in her voice. We better clear out of Mr. Thompson's office before we talk. All right, so what I was going to look at is, at first I thought this was like some sort of graphical glitch, but no, it's a hologram. I thought it was a, a texture glitch or something, but it's supposed to be a hologram. It's supposed to do that. That's freaking cool. Same thing with this one. Don't make me report you to hmm. Mr. Thompson. All right, so will she talk? Oh, no. We better clear out of she Mr. Thompson's to leave. office All right. before we talk. Will she, uh... Yeah, see, she follows you. Cool. Now you can get in the elevator. Or not. Oh, there she is. Will she talk to me now? Hey, mister, can we talk? Sorry. Now she wants to talk. Can yes, we, talk? we can. Sorry. I... You just want to get out of here. And you likely don't want to tag along like me. It's just... Mr. Thompson has his own view on matters, on account of it's his job and, and what all, but that's not the only side of the tale. Hmm. Um, let's see, this is about the deserters, what's the other side? Figures, Reed didn't exactly strike me as the most honest soul. Uh, what he said seems uh, pretty forward. If I wanted to deal with nuance, I wouldn't be this heavenly armed, let's move. Um, let's go with the first one. So this is about the deserters, what's the other side of it? To Mr. Thompson, a person's a gear. It does its job quiet-like. If it squeaks or stutters, it gets replaced. The deserters are decent folk. I knew some of them before they left. Hmm. Um, I can't blame anybody for wanting to leave. This town's got issues. How well did you know the deserters? You worked with them? Were you friends or what? Do you know Adelaide? I'm sure the deserters are very fine people. So you can be... There's some nice people dickhead answers here. You can be really a, a jerk if you want. Um, let's ask her how well she knew them and uh, they were her friends. I don't know anybody well. I mostly listened to them talk, kept my head down. There was a boy named Thomas who used to follow me around, asking questions about the stuff I fixed. He was real sweet to me. Not any sort of dissident. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> so do you know this Adelaide that Reed mentioned? Miss McDevitt. <clears throat> oh, gosh, no. She was a real important person. A flavorist. Made all a the food A flavorist. She used to work up in the big office with Mr. Thompson. All I know is she left after her son died. It was a real big to-do. I could hear them both yelling clear from my own place. Hmm. Well, I don't blame anybody for wanting to leave. This town's got some issues. Life's hard here. <clears throat> Especially for them that don't fit in so well. We're one big Spacer's Choice family, but every family's got the one the rest whisper about. Mr. Thompson's aiming to take away their power. They'll have no lights to see, nor heat to cook. They'll be at the mercy of marauders, or worse. I think you should talk to the town's vicar hmm. about it. Max, his name is. That's the second time somebody's mentioned going to talk to the vicar. Um, what do we need to talk to the vicar about? Flipping a switch in your power mill? About if what mm. Mr. Thompson proposes to do is upright. Leaving Miss McDevitt's folk to their fate. Their neighbors. Kim. And maybe he can think of something else to try. Something we ain't. He used to go walking outside town. Maybe he found something that'll help. It's just an idea. Hmm. That's all. Um, well sure. It wouldn't uh, hurt to go talk to this vicar. We'll stop by and see him. Thanks, mister. I just think when you gotta make a decision that'll hurt somebody, it's best to think on the right and wrong of it. That's what my dad used to say anyways. Hmm. Alright, so... Let's make a quick... Even though we just had a... Looks like we just had a save. Um, so we have our first companion. Actually, let's... 
show you guys the uh, companion ledger. Uh, the companion ledger shows you everything you need to know about your companions. You see their skills, stats, status effects, and gear. Change your companion's gear. First, select the item you want to swap out. And choose a compatible item to replace it with. You can also change how they behave in combat, so selecting their preferred weapon, follow distance, and aggressiveness. So, yeah, all other behaviors you can actually control their follow distance, whether they go mixed, ranged, melee. That's pretty cool. Aggressive, defensive, passive. Leave her on aggressive for now. And the follow distance, close, medium, far. There's her skills. She's good at lockpick and engineering. Um, overload. Parvati slams down her hammer, creating a blast wave that shocks enemies and stuns auto mechanicals. Okay, so that's... She has a pistol and a hammer. The impact hammer. I don't have anything else other than um, pistols, so we're just going to have to leave her with that. She has mechanics overalls, armor of seven, which it's almost <laughs> it's almost as much as the armor I'm wearing, and it gets a tech skill of five. So that's not any better than anything I've already got for her. So I'll just leave her in that, and then you actually can assign perks to your um, to your companions. They actually level up apparently, and you can get uh, assign them perks the way you assign yourself, which I think is pretty cool. So you can kind of customize what their uh, what their skills actually end up being, which is pretty cool. Um, all right, I think we've got this little bit of the grave. We have to go back and talk to Con, not, not Conrad, Silas. Let's finish this one up, or try and finish this one up. I'm not sure which way we got to go here. I think we'll try and finish up that quest, and then I'm gonna have to call it quits for the night. Because we're getting into the four-hour mark here pretty soon, so. I'm getting hungry. Yeah, this is uh, definitely not where we want to be. I don't know where the hell this is. It doesn't look doesn't look too friendly, though. Now, there's multiple ways out of Edgewater. And the map marker, the quest markers, seem to point to every one, not just the closest one to your objective, but to all of them. Oh, we didn't go in here. Oh. This is where the magic happens. Oh, I remember well, this. Yeah. Science. This is But it still happens. This is Hey, that's I mean, if you need it. <laughs> okay. Um so we have a workbench here. This is actually a pretty cool area. It's like a workshop. It appears to be completely Uninhabited. Um, select an option. To, yeah, so this is a um, the maintenance division. Trouble ticket. Our tops in summer. AG loader failure on startup. Status open. Priority medium. Steps to reproduce. Turn engine on. Try it again. Try it again. Kick the loader. Curse injured toes. I have a, I have to enter a minimum of eight steps. <laughs> Try it again. It makes a rattling noise. <laughs> hey, Firebird. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, yeah, we're going to be wrapping up here shortly. In fact, I'm, I'm not going to go through all this uh, terminal stuff right now. This is funny. You have to put a minimum of eight steps. So, uh, try it again. Try it again. Uh, let's see. That's good to see you, Firebird. We'll catch you next time. Uh, let's see. Steps to re... Oh, what's the problem here? Failure of main cannery production line at heat processing. Steps to reproduce. Startup procedure... Startup production line according to schedule S46701A. Observe processing of cans. Follow first batch to heat processing stage. One or more loud popping noises. <laughs> Smoke smell of burned saltuna. Overheat klaxon on monitor 6. Flame jets from exhaust ports, automatic shutdown. Uh, maintenance notes, likely as not, best got indigestion from being made to eat something she ain't made to. Heading over now. 
And the last trouble ticket here. Damn mechanicals. Priority automatically reset to... Automatically reset the low by executive level admin rule. Trouble ticket filed by L. Miller. So anything... Hang on a minute. I'll buy. Open for zero days. Priority low. So apparently anything that this L. Miller open, they automatically set to low. Steps to reproduce. Look northwise. I said look northwise, blasted useless translator. <laughs> Near scrap pile. Could be northeast from town, I guess. Observe mechanical. Clanking about... Oh, this is um Ludwig. This is the guy that we killed the robot for. Observe mechanical. Clanking about all menacing like, see it? It's right there. So, Ludwig, the guy we shot the robot for, reported it, and they just set it to low, and this is, uh, that was his ticket. That's pretty funny. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. So, this looks like somebody's house, but I, I don't think there's anybody here. Take that. I have to pick that. This is so freaking cool. This just goes out to the front, I think. Yep. So, I don't know why this is all abandoned, but it is. I'll leave all that stuff for now. Unless... If you're hungry, I could open up a can of something. Mock apple juice? We'll take that. Alright. Oh, for a second I thought she was T-posing, the way she was standing with her arms stretched out. Like she was T-posing, but then I remembered. It's not a Bethesda game. My dad's... It's an office. Just... My oh, this is... Is this... Is this your house? Oh, maybe this is her house. Well, I'm just taking it. Don't mind me taking your stuff. All right. So maybe this is her house. Let's see. Search for. Enter keyword record search or control all F center. Enter and compose new entry. Open last search. First entry. Indomati left Edgewater today. She's been reassigned to Terra One. I kissed her goodbye at the platform and I asked her if I've ever seen her again. We both knew the answer was no. Look up and think of me, and I'll look up and think of you. Transcript note from Indomati. Robert, I wouldn't they wouldn't let me keep her, but I know you'll raise her with love. Perhaps more than I would make time for. You're patient in in present in a way that I'm not. The company says she has no name until you give her one. Her name is Parvati. Oh, okay, this is this is about our companion. They tell me her birthday will be on set on the date she's legally delivered to you. She was actually born on July 7th. Make her feel special when I can. She liked it when I sang to her. It was the only time she stopped crying. Hmm. And so Apparently, maybe that's from her mother? Hmm. One record found. Open last century. I sat up last night reading through the Young Spacer's Guide. Almost starting to read it out loud from habit. It'll be ten years and I still have parts of it memorized. Reckon it'll take the next volume in to work at the cannery. There's an unused office where I've been taking my lunches. May as well read the whole thing again. Alright, so that's the, uh, the volume that we found. Alright. So that's apparently part of a quest. Alright, let's, uh... We'll poke around here later. So that's cool. There's terminals with some lore and some background story and... Look at that. Look at that sky. 16 times the detail. That's awesome. Alright, let's go find our way back out. Sometimes I wonder what I'm doing with myself. Just the yeah, way that's it goes, definitely, I suppose. Definitely sounds like that Nuka World Raider. All right. Okay, I think I just saw Silas's name. So I'm hoping that this is the way to go. I think we'll turn in that quest and uh, hopefully turn in that quest anyway. Although we still have Conrad to deal with. He hasn't paid yet. 
Hey, Miss Parvati. Come for a visit? Not today. Just helping this fella. Oh, that's cool. Lovely to see you about, Miss Parvati. Things going all right, Silas? Been keeping him careful and true, miss. Hmm. Uh, ooh. What are you talking about, Silas? Best to ask her yourself. Hmm. My dad's oh. buried here. Silas watches over him when I get... When I can't leave the house. Oh. I'm sorry, Pavardi. Oh. Well, thanks. Something I can do for you? Uh, about those fees you wanted. You run into any trouble? Conrad says he can't afford to pay. Conrad's barbershop is a yawning pit that swallows his every bit. I keep telling him he should cut a few corners. Skimp out on the disinfectant. You gotta put the squeeze on Conrad. Find some dirt on him. Maybe check his back room. Oh. I didn't know he had a back room. Are you suggesting extortion? Well, that's the word. Extortion. Been on the tip of my tongue <laughs> all day. Alright, I'll take a look. Alright, I didn't realize that uh, he had a back room. Let's see if she has any dialogue. Something you need? Um... Oh, yeah, um, I noticed you mentioned your dad a lot, but never your mother. That's on account of how I never met her. Um, you mean she's dead? I don't rightly know. She was in another division of the Spacer's Choice family. She worked in the Vale a few months, sorting the cannery computers. Her contract said any kids she had, expected or not, belonged to her office from the time of conception. So when I was born... Oh I boy, that's you. what that note was all about. Um, that's kind of inhuman. It's sensible. Dad just fixed machines. She did some kind of crazy math, high-level stuff. Better to raise me on his time than hers. So that note we just read was basically from... Must have been from her mother to the father. She was on some other planet. She was on one of the other planets in the colony system. Wow, that's so as soon as she was born, she became company property. All right, we'll talk about it later. Wow, that's pretty sad. All right, so we got to go uh let's see Silas must have something in his back room we can blackmail him with. Let's go do some blackmail. That's always fun. Dead sprat. Oh, I cut my own hair. But Conrad sells real good disinfectant. Does he sell things? All right, so... This is the back room. Hello. Yep, this is just like Long Neck Lukowski's. There's all kinds of... Uh... Oh, what is that? Letter from Phyllis. Conrad, receptionist shot himself. This is bad. Going to have to call it for what it is. Destruction of Spacer's Choice property. Eugene was an asset and somebody has to pay his body price. This is going to ruin us. So I was thinking that we pawn off his teeth. <laughs> Eugene had a full set of gold teeth. Heirlooms passed down his... Heirlooms passed down his family or something. Oh my god. You're processing his body, right? Just dig around and pry them out. <laughs> We'll sell the teeth somewhere nice and quiet, use the bitch to pay his body price, and no one's the wiser. What do you think? Don't write back. In fact, don't talk to me at all. Just give me a s special signal next time you see me. Waggle your eyebrows, Phyllis. <laughs> hey, Big Tex, how you doing? Um, yeah, still here. Although, uh, we're gonna finish up this, hopefully finish up this quest, and I'm gonna call it quits, because, uh, yeah, this game's, uh, doesn't feel like I've been going for four hours, but it's pretty much, uh, Pretty much the thing. This game's awesome. Having a blast with it. Um, we are on a quest that we're basically collecting gravesite fees. The people in this company town have to pay for their own graves. And they're on this quest to collect the, the fees from people who haven't paid yet. This guy said he didn't have the money to pay, so we were told to go dig up some dirt on him. And it looks like we just did. What can I do for you? Um, uh, it's definitely addicting. This game is, is it, having such a blast with it. Um, well, let's see if we can talk to him about the medical stuff first. Sounds like he had some training. I could, I know a thing or two about medicine. 
Oh? Am I in the company of a fellow doctor? Hmm. Only if we use the term doc doctor loosely. <laughs> so you prepare corpses for burial. That's a pretty specific job description. You may think that, but the tidiness of my fellow worker is my responsibility. Alive or otherwise. Whether you're showing up to work or going to that great cannery in the sky, it's my job to make you look like a million bits. Uh, Joel says the concept of someone's body having a price is upsetting. The whole concept of corporations owning the people and everything and having to pay for... Yeah, it's definitely upsetting. It's... Wow. But that's what this entire entire universe is... This game world is built on. Wow. Um, I knew the corporations were a thing. I just didn't realize it was that, that intense. Intense. Involved. Um... So I know about Eugene, we use our persuasion skills. I know about Eugene, why not use his teeth as collateral for your gravesite fees? You know about Eugene? How? Um, I just walked right past you and read the note from Phyllis that's back on your table. I'm a mind reader. <laughs> then, you know Phyllis suggested selling off Eugene's gold teeth. I didn't approve of the idea then, and I don't approve of it now. Eugene's golden teeth were a family heirloom, representing three generations of poor dental hygiene. He took them to his grave. Hmm. So at least he just sounds like he does have a few scruples. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure he won't miss them. That's unthinkable. Eugene's body and all rare earth minerals contained therein are solely the property Company of Company property, Spencer's of course. Toys. I can't <laughs> ask Silas to dig up a man's body and pry a few teeth loose from his jaw just to pay my bills? Can I? Uh, are you asking rhetorically? Because if you're being serious... Ugh, gross. Desperate measures, Miss Holcomb. Desperate measures. Hmm. I'm going to have to ask Silas to dig up those teeth. It's the only way I'm paying my gravesite fees. <laughs> um, and ask forgiveness from the vicar later. <laughs> The good Vicar Maximilian and I have never quite seen eye to eye, but your point is well taken. Here you are. Gravesite papers affixed with my signature and an IOU. Um, so I'm told Eugene killed himself. What happened? Eugene was not a suicide. He put a bullet in his brain, yes, but that's largely a technicality. I was the one who prepared Eugene's body for interment. I discovered symptoms of the plague on his corpse. And I discovered medicine in his pocket. Lots of medicine. Eugene overdosed on Adrena time, which is known to cause psychosis and paranoia as possible side effects. The paranoia drove him to take his own life. Hmm. Uh, so the town never had to... Uh, let's go with that's horrible. It's a miracle of <laughs> bureaucracy. If Eugene's death were filed as a suicide, we'd all pay the price for his crime. We can all thank our lucky stars that young Eugene was hopped up on medication and suffered its predictable side effect. Damn lucky. I included it all in my official report. I'd like to think I saved Edgewater a great deal of money. We never could have paid the fines associated with a suicide. Wow. All right. I guess that's it. All right. So... I guess we go talk to Silas now? You finish collecting the gravesite thieves and the people of Edgewater return to Silas. Okay. I don't remember if this is the way or not. Yep, I guess it is. Oh, Silas. So where's she? So Uh, that Maximilian, the Vicar Maximilian, I think he's another one of the, um, the companions you can recruit. So let's, uh, talk to Silas and turn this in. Grave digging's a fine profession. Always work to be had, and nary a word of complaint hmm. out of your clients. Uh, let's see. About those fees you- oh, actually, let's, uh, let's talk to him about Eugene first. Yeah? What about him? Uh, I read a letter from Phyllis. She mentioned digging him up for his gold teeth. Yeah. 
Funny thing, Eugene's body ain't uh -oh. where it's supposed to be. The night we were supposed to commend his body to the earth, I had his grave all dug up and ready, right? And so I thought, I'll just rest my eyes a bit. Do we have to go when find I his body up, to get the tea? Body was Please gone. tell me we don't have to do that. Spirited away, vanished. The footprints nearby suggested that Eugene was stolen by marauders. Or he rose from the dead. <laughs> um, I guess I'll keep an eye out for him. This is getting a little too absurd. All right, maybe uh, just keep an eye out for them, I guess. Let me know if you find All anything. All right. Um, about those fees you wanted. You run into any trouble? Um, I'm all done. Paperwork, fees, and signatures. Reliable work from a freelancer. That's going to take some getting used hmm. to. Uh, let's see. You can do Persuasion 6. I went out of my way for you. Abernathy was trying to hide his own illness. Let's use our Persuasion. Uh, I went out of my way for you. And I'll buy you a drink sometime. <laughs> uh, I was hoping for something a little more tangible. Uh, suppose you've earned it. One good turn deserves another. Oh, we got 300 bits. Another one for the 150. So like 550? That's pretty cool. Uh, you know that Abernathy was trying to hide his own illness. Abernathy was sick? With the plague? That's disgusting. I shook <laughs> hands with the guy. Hmm... He was convinced you knew only because I told him that. Uh, it's like, let's, uh, isn't that why you wanted to collect his fees? I needed his fees because of his name. A, for Abernathy. He was at the top Whoops. of my list, you see? <laughs> Oops, we kind of, we kind of outed old, uh, Mr. Abernathy there. Let me ask you something else. Yeah. Um, have you heard any news of the Hope? I don't think we asked him about this before. The colony ship? Are you talking about that old rumor? Some great big starship packed full of colonists what got lost in the Aether never to be found again? <laughs> Ain't heard that one since I was but a stripling. Can't say it was terribly convincing far as rumors go. Is there a reason mm. you're asking? Let's see. Are you saying everybody's forgotten about us? Hope isn't a rumor. I'm real. It's real. I'm living proof. Uh, let's see. I don't understand. You're saying everybody's forgotten about us? Hope's just a rumor, friend. Ancient rumor at that. Maybe you've been out in the sun too long. Why don't you head over to the cantina? Get yourself some zero-G brew. It's a brew that's good hmm. for what ails you. Um... I don't understand. They said the colony was expecting us. Look, I don't know what's got you caterwauling about Hope this... Hey, Big Tex, we'll that. catch you, you next time. Stop. Yeah, we'll be wrapping up here soon. Uh, trouble. But thanks for stopping in, man. Good to see ya. Um... So yeah, so apparently people keep telling me not to talk about the hope, about the ship that I was frozen on. So uh, where's the trouble in asking a question? Troubles in the asking. Or don't much care for folk running their mouths, spreading hoaxes and the like. Frankly, neither do I. So this board keeps uh, coming up when people tell me not to talk about it. Something I can do for I you? I think that's it. Uh, I'll see you around, Silas. All right. Faction with a reputation has changed. If enemies are hostile, but your reputation isn't kill on sight. Oh. I didn't get to see what that all said. So what does that actually do? All right. So Spacer's Choice, we now have 14% positive uh, reputation with. Nothing from any... We haven't met any of these other ones yet, so... All right. Um, there's her body. She's still... Well, we've been going for four hours now, guys. I am going to have to call it quits here. But this has been a blast. I'm really, really enjoying this game. And I hope everybody's uh, getting into this game as much as I am. I'm having a blast with it. So I think we're going to be playing uh, Outer Worlds for a while. It uh, is not as long of a game as, say, Fallout or Skyrim. I think... I've seen ranging between 20 to 40 hours of, uh, of do the whole game with everything. So even if we do 30, you know, three or four hours, there's it's only like 10 streams. So I think we're going to be playing this for a while because I am really, really digging it. But uh, thanks to everybody for coming and hanging out in their Saturday afternoon. 
Look at that beautiful sky. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Have a great rest your rest of your weekend. I'm gonna go grab some dinner, and we'll see all you guys real soon. Have a great night.